All right, it's time for a pulse check, ladies and gentlemen. John, on here with you. It's Monday, April 15th, 2024. How's everybody doing out there today? Let's get into the starting lineups. So first for the Montreal Canadiens, head coach by Martin Semele. They're 30, 36, and 14. It sounds like this. Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield, Leroy Slavkowski, with Mike Matheson and Justin Barron. Alex Newhook, Brandon Gallagher, Joel Armia with Lane Hudson and David Savard. So you get a chance to see Lane Hudson in this series here. So that could be interesting for me, watching all the college hockey. Jake Evans, Raphael Javi Bernard, Josh Anderson, Christian Dvorak, Michael Pozzetta, and Jesse Yolanen with Jordan Harris and Jonathan Kovacevic. I believe it's going to be Sam Montembeau in that. It could be Caden Primo. We're probably going to see both starters in back-to-back games. And for the Red Wings, head coached by Derek Lalonde, they are 39-32-9, and nine, fifth in the Atlantic. Their lineup sounds like this. Still Larkin, Alex DeBrinkett, Lucas Raymond, Ben Chirot, Moritz Sider. It's JT Comfer, David Perron, Patrick Kames, Simon Evanson, and Jeff Petrie. Joe Valeno, Robbie Fabry, Christian Fisher, Austin Zarnick, Zach Aston Reese, and Daniel Sprong with only Mata and Shank Gossespair. Should be Alex Line in goal, but we will also probably see James Reimer off the back to back either today or tomorrow. So I'm going to give you the in particulars. I know Alec Nob is probably covering the Pittsburgh game as he should against the National Predators. I've been thankful for him to have live look ins over the last couple of casts. I'm going to lean toward the Red Wings side because of obvious reasons. So here is the situation tonight and the situation that's going to present itself. So in terms of this game for the Detroit Red Wings, they must tonight get at least one point to stay in playoff contention. If they lose in regulation at all today, they will be eliminated. Essentially what that will mean for Tuesday, you might get closer to the Washington Capitals clinching. We can check that out on Tuesday. Or I might just go right into the playoff capsules, and I can have that stuff ready for you before the Saturday side of Game 1s as the Stanley Cup playoffs begins. If the Detroit Red Wings win today in regulation and the Capitals lose at least an OT to the Boston Bruins, the Red Wings will be in the driver's seat because if they win on Tuesday in this back-to-back, -back, they get in. So the long and short of it, as we get the National Anthems again, this is the last game at LCA this season, unless the Red Wings make the playoffs. So the long and short of it is this. If Washington wins out the next two games, in between Boston today and Philadelphia tomorrow, they're in the playoffs. Red Wings do not have tiebreakers. The Red Wings get in the postseason if they win both of their games in regulation against Montreal and the Caps only get three or four points. That could be a very good situation as well, although Montreal Canadiens can play spoiler. We'll get into some of the other ones when we get into the first intermission. But that is the long and short of it tonight. That's what's in front of you, and that's why we're doing these casts. We're following the playoff chases today, and maybe even tomorrow for the Red Wings, because it could all come to an end tonight, or it could all come to an end in Game 82. Now, I'm hopeful and you're listening to a Red Wings fan, although I try to be pretty neutral all the way across the board. I'm hopeful here that the Red Wings can actually get two wins against the Canadians on a back-to-back. -back. I know as tough as that is, the Canadians are one of the worst teams in the East, fifth worst across the NHL points percentage. So I'm hopeful they can get some wins. The only problem for Detroit is they need help. They need Boston Bruins to probably get this big W against the Caps today. I know OT, if he's listening in, he's going to be following along. I'm sure watching along for the Caps. He's not hoping for that because he's in a situation where the Caps control their own destiny. So that is where we are right now. And for Alec, I know tomorrow he's going to be covering the Panthers and Leafs in the chase for 70 for Austin Matthews. I just reached out to Cooper Hopkins to see if the Wings win tonight, that he might join me for part of tomorrow's cast so we can uh, – 
die on the sword here with the wings or maybe see them go into the playoffs because I haven't talked to him in a while. I know he's been very busy with all the travel and work. We got our Seattle plans all dictated for around mid-November, maybe before Thanksgiving. Try to go to the Kraken game and see them at Crown Pledge and sightsee in the Emerald City. So that's fun. There's going to be a lot to look forward to. I got Waterford Sharks playoffs at home ice next week. They're taking on Muskegon this weekend. So I'll have a lot to do. So, again, let's just reiterate. If Tuesday is all said and done, the Red Wings are done after today, I'll work on the playoff capsules. And you'll see that on the YouTube side when they go across all eight series per usual. I give you my thoughts and stats, and I let you know who I think is going to win. So that's what happens. I'll get a head start on the capsules if the Wings don't win today. If they lose in regulation, you know that they're done. So we've gone through both the anthems here, and we've seen everybody on the ice. As Monica Montaro, hopefully this is not the last time we get a chance to hear her on Dallas Sports Detroit. The one cool thing about it, if the Wings do make the playoffs, is you get a chance to get more Ken Daniels and Mickey Redman here for the first round because the local cable stations, Valley Sports Detroit, is going to have the first round, as they usually do. So it is Sam Montembeau in the goal crease, and it is Alex Lyon. So I did get that correct for today, so that's probably going to mean we're going to get the absolute flip of it tomorrow. Guys, girls, let me know your thoughts. I am on a knife's edge here because the Red Wings season, we followed it over the last couple of days with some of the live look-ins. Last time we had full coverage was when the Wings played the Caps a couple times, and then Pittsburgh lost both those games against Washington. We only got an overtime point against Pittsburgh. Even with all the streak and everything else, if the Wings would have handed their business against these teams, these games would not matter right now. <clears throat> so, Red Wings are going to need at least three points, and step one starts today. Step one is do not lose in regulation and hope everything else around you becomes an absolute earthquake. And that is the hope for the Red Wings, but why not just take care of your own business? That sounds good to me. So, that's what Ken Daniels just said. I said that ahead of him. JT Copper going to be in on the draw against Alex Newhook. And here we go. This could be the final home game in the 23-24 season for the Detroit Red Wings. As this is back around the end boards here for Jeff Petrie. And I want to cross the red line. The beautiful part about this, in between the Penguins, the Caps, the Flyers on Tuesday, but the Penguins, Caps, and the Red Wings, is they all start right now. So we'll be able to give you all the live updates you can handle in this first intermission as it goes across, because I know Valley Sports is going to be all over it. So Mike Matheson now. He's dancing with a puck, a tip out in front, and Gallagher could have slammed it into an open net, but that one went wide. Matheson now. Back to D. High slot. This is fought off by the stick of Alex Lyon. And Patrick Kane will use a shovel and get this one down the ice. So the thing for Montreal, I know I didn't get a chance to say this in the open because we're setting the scene. Heavy minus across the board. But when you have the players like Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield, and even Mike Matheson on defense, they drive the bus on offense. Rister, big stop by Mountain Bowl with the stick right off the rush. And Yuri Slavkowski gets stick lifted by Debrinket. Now you're right. We'll get this one right to the right side wall. Still one more. and tries to get an outstretched stick there. Debrinket finishes his hit near the right side red line. Number 71. Desperate to get this one out. He'll get it ahead. Raymond got a cross pass. Oh, it goes just wide. Moritz Sider couldn't finish. As we continue to go the other way, Bubba Sevek will get this one down the ice. Red Wings now in the road. The road Reds, I should say, home Reds now. As This is Larkin backhand. He's taken off the puck. Larkin sends it out in front. And this one intercepted here by Raphael Harvey Pernard, number 71, slow to get to his feet as the check gets finished. But he's skating back under his own power now. Looks like he's hunched over, though, so hopefully Dylan Larkin will get back into this game. That would be a big assault for the Red Wings' playoff chances if number 71 can't go. He got crunched in near the right side. Andrew Kopp is out there. Of note, Michael Rasmussen and Kopp are listed as day-to-day, -day. so Harris, Jordan Harris, goes ahead and tries to get a check, and it looked like Larkin blew an edge and landed right into the boards hard. 
and see what's hunched over. That's the last thing that Detroit needs right now. I don't think you're going to be able to keep Larkin out of this game, though. Cop wins the draw. Shane goes to spare. We'll get this one. It's Cop in the full college cage mask. Again, he got hooked in the face a couple of games ago. So he is back out there. He missed a couple. He's probably going to play both of these games here. You know they need him at least for a penalty killing role. And Detroit, now near the right, trying to make a pass between the legs of Harvey Pernard. And another Red Wing gets slammed right in the boards, losing an edge. Something's going on with a spot over there. And now Montreal off the back pass. Pernard will put this in. He's looking for Jake Evans. And now Red Wings. Two on two. Matheson back on defense. It's Cop. He made an outstretch pass. They got a nice stick in the lane for Jake. So we'll sit this one in for Alex Lyon. We'll brush it aside with the left side goal stick. Our tan San Luis squad sends it in deep again. When I think about that name, I think about Cooper Hopkins and some of the despair he talked about with the Flames. But our tan San Luis is a great coach. He doesn't have a ton of pieces, but he knows how to run that bus on offense. And he's got a good squad, I think, coming in their hands the next couple of years. And I believe that the Canadians are going to be able to make that push. The Rebels just hope they don't make it now. Robbie Fabry slammed his head in the boards as he was trying to hit Mike Matheson. So Larkin goes down heavy. Fabry, man, he could have messed up his spine going into their full speed trying to hit Matheson. He gets back up. He looks no worse for wear, but a couple nasty collisions for a trike. Comper now, as this one is. Just loft it in, Oli Mata. We'll try to get this off the backhand. Gosses Bear can't get it out. Austin Zarnick will take the long flip and across the wing wheel logo. And now Detroit will have to find their way back in their own end. They're going to try to take this right to left again. They're the home reds with the white stripe. Montreal Canadiens in the white with it right on top of the shoulder. And the turquoise really on the pants, blue on the pants. So this is now for three on two instead. Montreal will take some forward line changes. Simon Edmondson, out there with Jeff Petrie, number 77. is a smooth stick handle. And again, I cannot wait until a couple more seasons till Axel Sandin Pelica joins this defensive group for Detroit because he's a very smooth skater. We saw him at the WJCs in Sweden. He was excellent. Joel Armia, he made a great skate on his own right, be able to kill some time and get into the Red Wings zone. Patrick Kane, as this is near the right side boards, Trying to get around Brandon Gallagher. David Perron throws it right to the defense. And Montreal just hold it in now. Right side, here's a big wrister. This one's loose. And they score right out in front. The work of Joel Armia and Lane Hudson, former member of the Big Ten, gets the goal. He just makes his debut with Montreal. And Lane Hudson gets the goal. My, oh, my, what an effort there. It looks like Brandon Gallagher maybe scored off the backhand. Hudson fires it toward the net. It goes off Petrie. Skate, <laughs> Brandon Gallagher, excuse me, gets a piece of it between his legs, and he scores. I think somebody's off sides, though. This might be negated for your Slavkowski. I think he's way off sides. Brandon Gallagher puts it in, but they're going to say no. I guess he kept his stick and his skates up in the air. So Montreal gets their first shot on goal, and it goes in. And again, if Detroit loses this game in regulation, we don't even have to do anything on Tuesday because it'll be done for their season. So Detroit needs at least a point. Now they're going to have to come back from behind. The good news is there's tons of time left, but... Man, oh, man, Brandon Gallagher between his legs after a Lane Hudson shot. And Montreal has the lead. So really now the conjecture and story point moves to this. doesn't matter what everyone else does right now. Detroit can't win this one. Backhand, drop. Here's a wrist attempt for to break it. He sends it out front for Ben Sherrod. got all tied up. And now near the right side boards Gallagher from Lane Hudson as Montreal draws first blood. We set it in the open. I was able to get that in there as Mark Savard has it in behind the goal crease of Montembeau. This team can score goals. I know the numbers don't look like it on the outstretch, but of late, Montreal has been wheeling and dealing. Yuri Slavkowski has been on a heater, too. Ghost. Gain the entry. Full speed. Here's a drop. Right side down. Shot goes wide for Montembeau. As Redmonds will find it with Oli Mata. Mata. 
off his backhand. I'll try to send this one off the glass. Montreal will put this ahead as it's intercepted by number 88. Ghost now for Mata. As this will be in across the red line. Robbie Fabry, no worse for wear off that latest collision. Trying to get around or Mike Matheson. Red Wing sending out in front of Montreal gets an easy steal. Here they are. Off the rush. Great feet ahead. Off the drop. Gloves it down. Scores! Montreal with a 2 0 lead. And the Red Wings are in severe danger. 2 0. Two shots. Morgan Barron. Right in off the rush. And this is absolute disaster for the Red Wings. A perfect pass near the right side. This was gloved down by Barron, roofed past Alex Lyon. And again, I'll just say this to you, open and honest, Derek Lalonde, he's got to think about even making a goaltending change right now. Even in the first, two shots, two goals. Red Wings on life support. They're in life support coming into this game. Montreal Canadiens already have a 2-0 lead on three shots, and they're down by two with 13.35 left to go in the first. Absolute disaster here for the Wings. Perfect for Montreal. Again, they can play spoiler. This is exactly what they wanted to do going into this game, and I have that in my notes. You've got to be very careful about the north-south approach for Montreal. they got nothing to lose here. And they've already been able to show you they can score a ton of goals. And in their four meetings, Montreal has already taken at least one of them here. So Detroit needs three goals. They have 13 minutes left to go in the first. But, man, oh, man, this is not the start that they wanted. Detroit, Daniel Sprong, one on four, loses the puck. And now Montreal will settle it back near the right side red line. Patrick Kane gets the steal. Montembeau, perfect pass, but it's right to Edmondson. This will be sent in by Montreal as they'll get a chance to pick it up now. They'll play it back from D and send it forward. Canadians get the zone again. Are they going to score again? Wraparound attempt. This one gets denied. Jeff Petrie, new hook, set up for Armia. Desperation save for Alex Lyon. What is he feeling right now? What are the wings feeling right now down to nothing? As this is JT Comper. Comper, right side dot Chirot slapper blocked. Another chance for to break it. Has to get around a broken stick. That's a good break, but again, they're a defenseman back essentially. And now Chirot, left side, waits for an opening. Back pass. Cider, Chirot, Slapper, Coffer, back pass. Oh, what a save, Montebo! And Coffer gets the rebound. He scores! My, oh, my. I don't think I'm going to make it this whole game. It's 2-1. to 2-1, to one, Hard Tech Central as we've started this. Broken stick. Alex to break it. Try to get around it a couple times. Coffer. Battling with Savard, gets it off the backboards. Montebo saves it once, goes off the post from the break it, and the copper cleans it up. It's 2-1. Holy cow, what a ridiculous start we've had between these two teams. It's 2-1. to one. We're not even 10 minutes into the first period. So a minute 56 seconds apart, Red Wings back within one. A ridiculous start to this game. 2-1 is the score. Comfort gets the goal. Former UVM man, former champion with the Colorado Avalanche. Detroit needs one point tonight to avoid elimination. They've gotten within a goal. This one fired down. Not ice. Mike Matheson set it ahead. It bounces away from him. And now Copper with the latest goal from Debrinket and Sherrod. Debrinket hit the post. Copper, fortunately for Wings fans, got it back. Was able to backhand it past Montembeau. Seven shots on goal combined. Three goals already. This one. Now for Larkin. He's back there out on the ice. He's got the puck. Right side. Slaw. Cross pass. Debrinket shoots. Blocked. 71 trying to spin around and low kick. That's Raymond instead. Now Chirot. 
throughout the patient or the right side backboards. Gets it back out of good space. The shoe does. That's a save through traffic for Mountain Bowl. That's a good one. And now Montreal, right side, over skates it. Then Chirot, flip, can't get it out. Extra effort there for the cat. Right side, Red Wings, gain the entry. Larkin, backhand, he'll turn around. Larkin now over skates it for a moment, gets it back. He shoots it. He's got to get back on his horse now. Send it back for Mana. Mana. He'll get this in across the red line now. I don't know if he actually gained it, and they'll say he won't. 10 31 in this first. When we get a commercial break, I need some time to type in notes, ladies and gentlemen. We got three goals across the board already. 10 31 in the first. You wanted a safe start, increased traffic, and Mickey Redmond said so much for that. Nothing safe about this game. Hey, if the Red Wings do get two points tonight, you got to preach a safe start. Again, if you're Mickey Redmond for Tuesday, you cannot have this start. If you're in Detroit going into Montreal in the Bell Center, because that's going to put you in a world of hurt. They were lucky to get a quick enough goal. Here's a drop. Here's a good opportunity for Matheson. Fires it wide. Josh Anderson, the latest to get a piece of it after. Mata. Fabry now trying to get around some body contact. 10.05 left to go in this first. Three goals on the board. Montreal will head 2-1. Now off the drop. Montembeau behind his crease. It got a little busy. Man. Great opportunity now for Kovacevic. Send this one in off the backhand. Montreal turn up that spin across the wall. And Anderson gets saved there by Warren. Now Shane Goss is fair for Andrew Kopp. Again in the full face mask. Taking a stick right to the face and no call in that game. Kovacevic now almost gets thefted by Robbie Fabry. He's trying to provide that uh, four check and support. As this is a chance down the middle, they go for an extra pass for Joel Armia instead, and it's pock picketed by a trick. Daniel Strong. Now for Joe Valeno. He'll finish his hit number 90, trying to get to it. He'll be the first to get to it for a trick. Valeno, cross. Edmondson, open. Here's a pass to the right side. I can't believe Edmondson didn't shoot between the circles. Red Wings do keep it in. Here's a chance for Petrie. This one blocked back and around the end boards now for a trick. Take a D to D, Zarnik, Edmondson, high circle, turn around, Milano, nowhere close. And Daniel Sprong tried to get a stick lift. He missed the defense. Milano tries to get another finish of a hit. And it's Comper. Comper now. We'll get this one to the right side. Dot Red Wings have it. Wrist shot. This one blocked by this. We'll have to save Montebal. Bounce up in the air. It's a break for Detroit. Trot, settle it down. Ferran back around the kick play. Comper. Open the scoring for Detroit, but they're down 2-1. Kane, loose side in front. Montreal struggled to clear for a moment. Copper still with it. Kane trying to locate it. This is put around the end boards now. Chirot. Sider, settle it down. And across the blue. And the Red Wings have iced this thing. 8-13. Left to go in the first. We're still not going to media timeout, so the notes will have to wait. As we get a little fan duel here, anybody betting here, if you want to bet, you bet on the odds for any of these teams to make it. That's what I said in the YouTube question. You got Pittsburgh, you got the Caps, you got the Flyers, you got Detroit. You tell me who gets in. Season ends on Tuesday for the Flyers, the Caps, and Detroit season ends Wednesday for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh needs a little help. Flyers need a ton. And the Caps, if they win both, they're in no matter what. Comfort. Defensive zone draw against Nick Suzuki. Comper should get the draw advantage, at least, and he does. He's really good at that part of it. This is now across the blue line here, number 88 with a loft. And on the left side, I'll chip it up the glass, and it's stolen here. Mark Savard passing behind the cage. Montembeau. Good pass here for Montreal ahead. Right off the rush, they go for a wrister. This one sticked to the side by Alex Lyon. Alex Lyon's got to know, at least for me, he cannot give up any more goals in this game. Dylan Larkin. Now on the right side, puts on the brakes. There's a pass for Raymond. This will go across ice off the boards. Here's a slapper block from Mata. Picked up now. Good effort for Sider as this goes back around the cage for Detroit. Mata. Now for Alex to break it. Fired toward the net. This is blocked off of Raymond's pants. And now Sider. Raymond sticking the lane. And Slavkowski makes it out. Stretch Mata. Got to get back quickly. 
He will. Good pass. Cole Caulfield's got some burners. And Detroit, desperate to get it out of their own end. It's the Brinkett. Settle back for a Larkin. Great move for Ghost. Find the entry now. Here's their inadvertent drop for Raymond. They ran right into each other. Now it's opportunity for Evans. Jake has it. The right side. He'll drop it. Go day to day. Matheson thought about it. Here's a chance. New one. Great move. And Lyon. And from Anderson there has the save. Will finally take a break. A lot has happened. 6.53 in the first. Montreal up 2 to 1. <clears throat> All right, let's get the notes in. We need to do so. It's our first stoppage. Okay, I got the notes in there. I'll type in the actual particulars in the box once we get our next break. There was three goals in the span of 425, 615, 811. Looks like Lane Hudson's not getting an assist from the Brandon Gallagher between the legs off a chance from traffic. Here's a one-timer. This goes off the end boards a lion able to touch with the stick. Let's get back into the play-by-play, -play, though. 640 left to go in this first Robbie Fabry. Tries to put this in off the glass. This bounces off of Lane Hudson. He's been everywhere now. And now a race. Robbie Fabry does have speed, but Lane Hudson, I imagine, got the fresh legs here. Rafael Harvey Pernard loses it. And Jake Evans give this back to Pernard. Off the backhand now, Simon Edmondson. A little miscommunication there. Evans been able to finish off a hit. Number 77 now has it for Detroit. Edmondson will back up near Lions goal crease. And Detroit. 2-1, it was an absolute disaster start for Detroit, and now they've iced it. It's 2-1, though, because of JT Comfort scoring after Debrinket hit the post. So Lane Hudson, they're going to show this now. I'm going to try to call this in real time. Good traffic and tie up in front of the net. Red Wings get the stick held right in front of the referee. No call. That's what they're showing right in front of the Zebras. They're providing a screen and a cross check. And that was all set up for Montreal to get a wide up in one tee. You know, the left side dot, and the ref's like, hey, you didn't see anything? That's what Cop was saying to him. Now picked up for Matheson, and now another stick aside for Alex Lyon, as this is near the right side inboards. Comfort off a tie-up. This is the wings with the David Perron. As they'll chip this in ahead. Patrick Kane. Now on the right side wall, as this is Comfort, stolen by Perron. This will put this in around the end boards here for JT. We'll get it now on the right side, Dot. It's intercepted here. Matheson trying to push it ahead. Ben Sherrod is the defensive side out there with Sider. Comfort, good touch pass for Kane. 
Kane's got no other choice but to flip it in deep. Cat will join in. Comfort gets the steal. He'll turn and fire it in into an open area for number 88. Patrick Kane off his backhand. Settled down for Sider. Now to brink it. Sider was cutting in. Try to find that pass as Moritz will pick it back up. Now the cat will send it in deep for Detroit. Shots are 7 4 Montreal. And they got a 2 1 lead. When we get another stoppage, maybe into the intermission, I'll give you that scoring update and I'll reset all the way across particulars as far as who gets in after what. And we'll get our other goals typed in. Ben Chirot now. And across the red one, a cross check. As this one is sent in, Red Wings fans won on a penalty. They're not going to get one. It's Jordan Harris. We'll take a long pass in there from Kovacevic. Dump it in. Red Wings get the steal across the defensive zone. Lucas Raymond off the spin. Heads it for Debrinket, who's still out there. It feels like a while. Debrinket, he didn't get called for a trip. I don't think the reps are going to call anything today as this is put around the end boards here. Lion. Now near the right side, red line. One of another Red Wings again gets crunched. As the Valeno line is out there, Austin Zarnik, Joe's got it. It's Valeno now for Mana off the drop. Again, Red Wings and Canadiens. It's a back-to-back. This one at the Bell Center tomorrow, but another 7-10 start. Here's a zip pass for Sprong. He shoots. He probably waited too long. As it's dropped now from Zarnik. Here's a chance. Valeno gets absolutely rocked in front of the net as this is settled down. And now Alex Lyon for Simon Edmondson to put this in off the end boards. Daniel Sprong, as it's Joel Armia. Now on the right side, holding on the right side boards, Armia will spin. He'll have it off his forehand. He'll try to settle it out in front for Robbie Fabry. Fabry will chip and chase off the glass. He can't find it. Red Wings have had a lot of those right now where it's one and done. Too much of that in the regular season and that we found as well. As this is put around the kick plate, Alex Lyon come out of his goal crease. That was not a good pass. And Raphael Harvey Pinard and Ben Chirot. Chirot wins the battle as this is Detroit off the turn. Christian Fisher set it down. Chirot has it in his own end. About 255 left to go in this first. Andrew Kopp off sides is Detroit. So let's take another break. 253 left in the opening frame. Montreal still up 2 1. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have some scoring updates for you. And right now, none of them are good for Detroit. So back into the play-by-play here. I got some scoring updates for you. We're getting near the end of the first Montreal 2-1. All the scoring updates do not favor the Red Wings. If you're following this side of the broadcast, the Caps have a 1-0 lead on the Bruins. Again, the Caps won both their games. They're in. They got the tiebreakers. Penguins, this matters a little bit less. Detroit takes care of their own business, but they got a 2-0 lead over the Preds. 
I did ask Alec Nava whether or not the Preds probably just locked up shop because everything else kind of clinched. I think I might have felt that a little bit and got that one correct. They're already up 2 nothing on Nashville. And the Islanders up 2 nothing on the Devils. That one's not going to matter so much, but we'll keep our eye on the Caps. Detroit's got to win, though. Here's a two-on-one. Raymond to break it, and he can't get the puck up his stick. It was a tough pass. Raymond elected to go for it. I don't blame him there. He tried to drop it for DeBrinken, and DeBrinken couldn't shoot it. Here's a chance down the ice. Montreal has won a dead against them. 2-19 left to go in this first. We gave him the scoring updates, and then we got a two-on-one right after that. As Alex DeBrinken, I don't even think he had a chance. We get an overhead view. DeBrinken near the right side, and the pass wasn't there. It wasn't there for Raymond. He missed, he missed the brinket in tight. The brinket would have had an open nap, but that was not near his stick at all. And Montembeau survives the danger. Red Wings win the draw, however. Here's a slapper. A good save for Montembeau with the left pad. This will be spun around for Cider. Cider now. Back around the backboards here for Chirot. Go crisscross. Chirot now from Patrick Kane, who was on the defensive side for a moment. And Montreal will go ahead and hand grenade this thing down deep. Warts. And across the wing wheel logo. Here's Kane. Backhand trying to drive his way through the bowling pins. This will go back to back. Now for the D. Here's Cider. This is bounced out in front. Perron turned around and shot. It was blocked a couple times out front. Patrick Kane. Good play off the stick one. This is Red Wings with JT Comper sitting back around Chirac. Well, fire. Good stick chop there for Cider from Chirac. And Morris will have it. Pittsburgh up 3 nothing now on Nashville. That game's probably done. That's what I was calling to Alec. I know he was probably biting his nails a little bit more. As this is a slap shot saw of the way by Sam Othenbo. But Nashville's essentially got nothing to play for. They're already locked in. Yeah, you can play in the second seat against Dallas if you want, or you can play against Vancouver. But the main thing for me is don't get injured. Come right back. We'll finish off the first. <clears throat> So I do feel good about calling that at least. I kind of thought that the uh, Preds would lay an egg, to be honest with you. Right now, three goals for Pittsburgh, 339 in the first. We'll click their box. It is Crosby, 42nd on the power play from Bunting and Rust. Carlson is 11th from Crosby and Pedersen. And Latang on the power play. Two power play goals from Smith and Pedersen. Nadelkovich, 5 out of 5. And you say Soros. He is going just through a storm. He's trying to dodge rain with an umbrella. 15 out of 18 is his save percentage. And maybe you say Soros can have an early night. Pittsburgh on the power play for the third time already, and they've scored twice. Again, Pittsburgh needs to win both their games and still get help. So it's not a given for Pittsburgh because if Washington, as we said, takes care of their own business, it won't matter. And it won't matter for Detroit either. I figured following this game would at least leave the most intensity only because the Red Wings like to do that. But the Canadians are a very good offensive team of late. <clears throat> so they showed it on the Valley Sports Detroit feed. John Carlson with the goal as the Caps up 1-0 on Jeremy Swayman and the Boston Bruins. So Larkin... Don't know if he's going to get waved out of the draw. I think they're just going to go out and have a meeting of what they want to do here, just in case they win it. Shots on goal are 7 to 6 for Montreal. They got a 2 1 lead. Larkin, straight back. Raymond now drive. Larkin was cutting right to the net. So that was a design play. They were getting that all settled there. Larkin won it. It was just a severe cut that was too much traffic out in front. Raymond. And off the kick plate, stolen now by the Canadians. Is this going to stick in the lane? This will bounce the side. It's been a fast-moving first period, and it's not just because Montreal's got a couple of goals, as it's the cap. Good outstretch. 
This is just on side. Larkin dropped Chirot. Chirot now off his backhand. See if he can get something going. Chirot trying to play it in between. His leg is going to fall down. He had nothing else to do there. Joel Armia will take his bank feed. This will be an across to try to find Harvey Pinard. Intercepted by number 71. Here's his sauce. Raymond will touch it for the brinket. The brinket. He's not had passes that got anywhere close to him. He tried to find Raymond. And that was blocked out in front as this is spun around the kick. Well, maybe they took one of the Pittsburgh goals off the board, but I don't think so. As the belly bar is a little bit behind. 13 seconds left to go in this first. It certainly looks like Montreal's taking a 2-1 lead in the dressing room. Well, if you're Detroit, that sounds a lot better than 2 nothing, considering the way that this game started early. They got slapped right in the mouth. A little bit of poutine pie there from uh, The Rock. Dwayne Johnson, he was delivering up the pain, and that's what uh, the Montreal Canadiens were doing against the Red Wings. Andrew Kopp in the full draw in the face mask against Christian Dvorak. Try to see if he can win this draw. Kopp will put it into the right side boards, but this is with the Canadiens. He'll look up for the screen. Alex Lyon made the save. Red Wings are going to run out of time. Maybe, maybe not. Kopp's got to shoot this thing. Gain the zone. He fires. This one stopped by Montembeau. That's how we end one. Detroit down one after two. It's 2-1. Two, 40 minutes left in their season, maybe? Who knows? They need at least a point, but it depends on what everyone else does. Come back. we got 40 more minutes of tension-filled hockey, I'm guessing. <clears throat> So, ladies and gentlemen, we have our situation. I have my notes out in front, but let me give you the shots on goal, and then we'll go across uh, you know, what needs to happen, and we'll get that reset again for those that are joining in late or for those that need to get a refresher. Hell, I could use one myself. So shots on goal, 8-7 for the Canadians, 11-9 hits Montreal, face-offs, 9-5 Detroit, no power plays. So I will put the update in the YouTube side box. Uh, Chip says, hey, bud, where are you watching the game? I am doing the game as I usually do, my friend, in my room with the camera side on the big uh, LG C1, 48-inch. So we're going to watch the disappointment and all that glory. That's what uh, I am following along on. I hope that you are doing well, my friend. Again, you already know all the particulars here. Detroit needs at least a point. To continue their season right now i'll give you a look across the scoreboard and that's not looking good i'm assuming that you're also following that as well so i'm going to put this in there i'll get the other updates here in a second so let's look around the league of what is important looks like one of the penguins goals was taken off the board it was three nothing this one matters less for Detroit right now because if Detroit takes care of their business, it won't matter what the Penguins do, but they got a 2-0 lead on the Preds. The one of note, OT is going to like this, Chef and I are not, but the Caps have a 1-0 lead. If the Caps win their game against the Bruins today and Philadelphia tomorrow, they're in. They got all the tiebreak. So those are the latest scores there. I threw that in there for anyone else joining in. So here is the reset for anyone else that joins in on the Twitter space. I did reach out to Cooper Hopkins. I might be able to get him tomorrow. I know Alec Nava is probably following along on his own as he joined with me. 
And uh, Chef, who was always leaving the comments, I appreciate it. And just follow along with Pittsburgh. Again, that was a critical Pittsburgh-Detroit game the other day. Hell, both those games against Washington were, and Detroit couldn't get the points. But here is the situation at hand. If you're following along as a Wings fan, they need at least a point today to keep their season alive for tomorrow. If they do not get that, they'll be eliminated. What that means for me is the Tuesday side, I can probably go ahead and start working on playoff capsules to get those posted before Saturday night for Stanley Cup playoffs round one games. So I'll get that all done, and those will probably all be uploaded by Friday night. That'll probably be my plan. Not because I don't want to see the Caps clinch or anything else. I'm just going to work on some other stuff as I watch. So if the Wings take care of their business today, and let's say they win on Tuesday, they'll get four points. But the Caps have to lose one game. It doesn't matter if it's regulation or not. They can lose in overtime to Boston. They can lose in overtime to Philadelphia. So Washington gets in. If they win both their games, bar none. That's scenario A. Scenario B, which could be likely, Red Wings win both their games. Caps miss one of the points, three out of four. Red Wings get in. Scenario C, and not very likely, is Pittsburgh wins both their games, and Detroit and the Capitals only get two of four points. That would let Pittsburgh get in. The Flyers, scenario D, we're getting in the insanity area. The Flyers will get in if they win their last game tomorrow against Washington. And Pittsburgh, Detroit, and Washington do not get any points. You want the apocalypse scenario. This is the one I thought of, which I don't think is going to happen. Scenario E, nobody wins. Washington doesn't get any points. Detroit doesn't get any points. Pittsburgh doesn't get any points. That is going to leave you with nail-biting for Tuesday and Wednesday. Scenario D and E not likely. The cap situation is when both can get in. The Detroit situation could be likely when both games and Washington misses one. So that is your complete reset as far as what's ahead. I will do that again in the second intermission for those that uh, are confused or just want to follow along, I try to make that as clear as possible. And yes, it is up top of my head. If you're just joining us, the score line is 2-1. Goals for Montreal, Alex line gets scored on in two of the first three shots. Gallagher gets the rebound amongst the traffic after a Lane Hudson chance. Again, Lane Hudson was just playing college hockey in Minnesota. He ends up after the Frozen Four coming to Montreal as a draft pick. Gets a shot off the rebound. Gallagher picks it up, scores between his legs. And Justin Barron off a great pass and the rush to the right dot. And Evans and Anderson get the assist. Two, nothing, Montreal. 6-15 into the game. 8-11. Cat hits the post. Comfer picks it up a second time. Scores off the backhand pass. Montembeau. Detroit makes it a 2-1 game. Shots on goal, though, 8-7 for the Canadiens. 11-9 hits for Montreal, 9-5 face-offs. Detroit, no power plays. In this question, Abe Boston, I thank you guys for the very active, and it might just be because of my Wings fandom, although I try to call the games neutrally here, is the best I can, although it's very difficult here these last couple of games. And maybe because of the picture, I said, assuming elimination is not on the line tonight. Who gets the final playoff spot at season's end? We got eight votes. Seven of them are for Detroit. Twelve percent. One of them is for the Caps. Caps control their own destiny. Thank you for the votes. I would imagine a lot of you are not going to vote for the Flyers. They are in dire straits. For those that are interested, and honestly, even for me, you can laugh. I want to see. Pretty sure Caitlin Clark is going to be the. Consensus number one pick. Let's see the draft picks across the board. If they show those there. So I'm going to try to click on this. So we are on the fifth. Looks like we're on the third pick. Caitlin Clark was the number one pick. 
Cameron Brink was taken by, let me see. I have to load this a couple times because this is not loading. So the LA Sparks, Cameron Brink, Caitlin Clark goes number one overall as expected. So I think she is going to be a WNBA superstar. I don't really buy into the, it's going to take a year or any of that stuff. Not with the shooting ability like that, but it's just me. And it looks like the Sparks will get picks two and four. So they can really, really do some damage in this draft because you have Cardosa and some of the other ones. You got Angel Reese. Again, I don't follow all of it, but those are the names that you heard from in the tournament. Probably could get those picked up. Detroit, there is another one of these games as we're under Jackie Robinson Day in Major League Baseball. It's a one nothing lead for the World Series champs, Texas Rangers over the Tigers. I have the Valley Sports Extra feed, the local one today. I'll have that again tomorrow, assuming the wings are not eliminated. If they're eliminated, I might work on capsules. So local news for me, I know it's motor mouth, I apologize, but we got the local coverage here today. And Chef, I don't know if you follow along with the Pistons or not. God bless you if you don't, because I'm glad you don't waste your time. Tom Gorris says he wants to make a change underneath. When we all know that Tom Gorris is the one that needed to be changed. When I used to work at the Oakland Press, that was several, several, maybe even a decade ago, that we talked about, a lot of my friends and I during the time, because that was when I was going to Oakland University, that if Tom Gorris was made, named the general manager for the Pistons, they would go up in flames and be one of the worst teams we've ever seen. I think a lot of us were had the nail on the head. So what Tom Gorris essentially is going to do is clean house, but not himself. Looks like Troy Weaver is on his way out. The funny story about Troy Weaver, again, this was about a month and a half ago, was He's sitting down with the fans at LCA taking in a game. And one of the fans goes, hey, Troy, you suck at your job. Quit this team. Sell the team. And then he goes up to somebody and says, hey, if you keep talking, I'm going to beat you behind. I don't want to say anything on the YouTube side because you get flagged. Big fight almost ensues between Troy Weaver and a fan who was right because Weaver sucks at his job. Seems like Trey Weaver is on his way out. Tom Gorris will stay. That probably doesn't mean much. Cleaning house means, hey, are you keeping Cade Cunningham or not? Because he's going to be eligible for an extension. You could start completely over again. They haven't even gotten started. That could also be a problem. What does that mean for Detroit going forward? I don't think that means much. I think you're going to be starting all over. Again, if I'm cleaning house... Mighty Williams is still owed another six years of his hundred million. And he's gonna get paid and be fat and sassy, and he should. Because the the Pistons were stupid enough to try to offer him a contract four times and he turned him down the first three times. When you get a hundred million dollars flash in your face, I'd take it too. So yeah, it's a disaster. If you're Trey Weaver, you say hey, I should get credit for drafting James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and I say no, or Serge Ibaka, because everybody was going to take those players. How the F should you get credit for guys that were already going to be top five picks at, at worst? doesn't make any sense to me. You get credit for finding gems in the draft. You get credit for getting somebody like Nikola Jokic in the second round or taking Giannis like the Bucks did, like 18th overall when everybody else passed on him. That's when I give you credit. You don't get credit for drafting guys that are already consensus picks to begin with. So that's my soapbox. We'll get into the second period in a moment. And we'll see, it depending on the scoreline and what happens across the board, or whether or not I'll have enough energy to go on the rest of the soapbox. Hey, we could have a post-mortem for the end of the year for Detroit. Who knows? Thinking it's Friday, when it's really 
Who just picked up Buffalo Wild Wings, y'all? Hey, sir. Hey. What? Jerry got beat up, though. Yeah, Jerry already got beat up, though. Jimmy already got beat up, though. Jimmy already got beat up, though. Well, Jimmy already got beat up, though, delivered. But did he get six free wings? Yeah. No! Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. It's, ooh, yes, bro. You need Verizon. Trade them out and get an iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage so you can take all the pics. So many selfies. Oh, and these panoramic. And as many portraits of me as your heart desires. How about none? Uh, none, yeah, none feels right. <laughs> Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro on us. Only on Verizon. All rights to this broadcast are reserved. Any rebroadcast, recording, retransmissions, telecommunications to the public, or other unauthorized use of this broadcast without the express written permission of the Trey Redmond's is prohibited. Hey, Mom, My parents, they were like, I don't know, like, do you want to do what with your life? I'm like, I trust you, it's gonna be great. I am the lighting director at Little Caesars Arena. I'm the one up, you know, puppeting the lights. Lighting is a form of art, making you feel the drama and making you feel something. You're not just going to a story event, there's always to a show. It's like being a part of like a huge party every day. scoring chance for the Red Wings. Yeah, you only gave up one, but you're now two to one. The offense has got to be a heck of a lot better as I mean hitting the net, making the most of your opportunity. I thought Raymond in a game like this, he's been fantastic. Don't get me wrong. When you have a chance like that, you have to take the opportunity with the shot in a game that you must have. Those are the accepting first period stats. Meanwhile, we're keeping track of games all around the National Hockey League. This is the Islanders playing against the Devils in New Jersey. And a power play goal here for Kyle Palmieri. It's the Isles up 2 nothing on the Devils as they approach themselves a second period in New Jersey. It's going to be like this all night long. We're kind of trying to keep track of every other game and what it means to the Red Wings. And the Wings know that they first job will be to take care of All right, ladies and gentlemen, strap in here. About another 90 seconds before second period puck drop. John Ott, I'm your play-by-play -play man. It's a 2-1 lead for the Montreal Canadiens after one. Again, if you're just joining in, good start for Montreal. Again, block shots are about 16-2. I'll make sure I throw that in my notes as well. For Montreal on the block shots category. On the block shots category, Brandon Gallagher scores between his legs. At about the 15 marker. And then you have Justin Barron off a sweet feed from Josh Anderson and Jake Evans near the right side dot as that one's whistled past Alex Lyon. Top left corner and in. The Red Wings do get one back at the 11 marker. Alex Debrink at the cat hits the post. Copper scores off the backhand 2 1. No power plays to be had in this game so far. So this is going to be big, and if you're joining us again in the Open today, Detroit has to get at least one point in this game today to keep their season alive. But, again, that ultimately depends on what everyone else does. You really need to win out. That's just where I'm at with it right now. Washington holds the tiebreakers, but Detroit's got to win out. <clears throat> So 
So Lane Hudson out of BU, again, I said Big Ten. My apologies there out of BU, Boston University Terrier. He was one that almost started the scoring, but he did get the primary assist on the Gallagher goal from his wrist shot. As Alex Lyon couldn't pick it up, and Brandon Gallagher scored between the legs, between his own legs. 8-7 is the shot board. Red Wings have the puck. They're going to try to take this left to right in the second period. Sam Montembeau plays this with the goal stick in uh, Montreal. They're in the road whites with the blue pants and the red shoulder. Detroit and the all red at home. Here's the cap. Rister stopped by Montembeau as he gets a piece of it with the glove. Put back around the end boards now. This is with Alex. Now for Dylan Larkin. As he shoved near the left side boards, here's a Centering feed, trying to find Lucas Raymond, but it pinballs all the way back to the defense. Detroit will settle it down off an outstretched pass from about 60, and now fire it in across the red. It's David Perron off the kick plate. This will be bounced off a couple of stick blades. Detroit with Patrick Kane, spin, turn, fire. As this goes around the end boards, and Lane Hudson will send it across. Montreal will take an outstretch. As this one is put back around the end boards, Alex Lyon. Here's a centering feed. The Red Wings just get a stick in the lane. Fired toward the net. And Alex Lyon will find it. And the butterfly close the five hole. 1844 is. It was Barron who fired it right on. Shots on goal now read 8 to 8 with 1844. Left to go in the second. And maybe 1844. In this second, another 20 minutes, about 40 minutes left in the Red Wings season, possibly, depending on what happens today. Kind of been riding that roller coaster over the last couple days, haven't we? As far as the playoff chase between Pittsburgh, Washington, Detroit, Philadelphia Flyers, all battling for the last wild card spot in either conference. As this is game 81, Andrew Kopp now. We'll lose it in between his legs. Jeff Petrie is back there to provide support. Simon Evans will just chop it near the players' bench. David Perron loses it now. Simon Evanson goes for the pursuit angle. Good chop from Evanson. Now a pin against the wall. He still needs help from Fabry as this is lost between some skate blades. Number 14. It's dispossessed of the puck. And now Simon Evanson with a log jam. As this goes here for Petrie. Petrie. Again, on his horse against his former team as the Red Wings will go ahead and put this in across the red line. Now, Boston still has motivation to win this game against the Caps because they clinched the Atlantic and get the number one seed. So they need to be able to get this one as well. So it's not done for the Wings, but they need to get at least a point. Sprung as this will go right to Montembeau. And now Mike Matheson get it around his own end is being harassed by J.T. Comper. Near the left side red line now the speed. No look back handed in for Alex Lyon. Shane Goss is fair, 1725 left to go in the second. Joining her within the call on the Valley Sports Detroit extra feed because the Tigers are in action with the Rangers. Oli Mata off the backboards, bounced away from Joe Valeno. Daniel Sprong try to go ahead and locate. Valeno now off the left as it's Josh Anderson. Anderson now, number 17, a ball doubles his way. And to the left side, red one. Holy mother. As this one goes off the backboards here for Valeno. We'll take a flip. Red Wings almost had a jailbreak of a two on one. And now it's Mata off his back and off the glass softly for Harris. Kovacevic send this one in the Red Wing zone. Picked up now by Ghost. And off the backboards here for Daniel Sprung. We'll take the long clear. And near the left side blue line, Derek Lone's forward lines need off the ice. And they'll do so now. His ghost will watch. Getting his defensive partner there forward. And Alex to bring it, trying to provide the support as Harris. This pinched against the boards there from the strike. Ghost now for Dylan Larkin, who's right there. Red Wings now trying to break out left to right. Too far for Sprong. He was looking to cheat his way through to goal. This is now on the defensive side. Lane Hudson, VU man. We'll send it ahead. Nick Suzuki catapulted off the puck. This will go back from Larkin, take a bounce for Montreal as this is settled down for Hudson. We'll go D to D. Now in the middle, it's Savard. Back for Lane. Lane now looks for one. This one tipped in front. Good save, Alex Lyon. They jam away at it and finally get a whistle. 
Yuri Slavkowski and Nick Suzuki are uh, getting a little heated here with Ben Sherrod. Alex Debrinkit gets a little soft hemlock here to make sure nothing comes of it. Hey, it's very important. If you're Detroit right now, being the home team that needs a point to keep their season alive, you cannot involve yourself in ex any extracurricular at this point. It's Cole Caulfield and the sauce that like the Slavkowski in amongst the traffic, even with the slash against Ben Chirac. You can't get involved in any of this right now. And if you're the Red Wings and you get a power play, you got to score on It's point blank as day. If you're Montreal, you just keep doing what you're doing. They've dropped six of the last eight games, two, four, and two. Each of the last two games decided no T. This is now Patty Kane. On the left side is Matheson. He's pinned. He loves to push the pace on defense. Great spin. Here is a drop, and somehow that doesn't go. Red Wings on a 2-1-2 two, two the other way. It's Kane. Stick handle for Perron. Somehow gets it there. Perron. Stutter step. Nobody's home, though. There's Edmondson. Comfort. Kane. Kane. He is dispossessed by all around. Comfort trying to find it as Kane couldn't outmaneuver the Montreal defense. And Matheson. Look to start it again. Good stick in the lane from David Perron. This is dumped in by Montreal. Too far off the kick plate here, and it goes to Comfort. Comfort from 50. Kane able to stay on sides, but he needs a change. As Montreal with Kovacevic, start again, dropping Kovacevic. Send this one to the right side wall. Great pass, and what a goal! Montreal back to a two-goal lead. What a breakdown in the defensive zone. And Derek Lalonde is beside himself as Montreal gets wide open. Mata doesn't see it. Gosses Fair doesn't know it. And Jake Evans with the lovely feed. Raphael Harvey Pernard is the one that finishes it. So Evans with the sauce. Raphael Harvey Pernard, a nasty goal. A little how do you do against Alex Lyon. And it's 3-1. So Montreal and across the red line now as this one's fired in. Detroit, this is the second time they're down by a pair of goals. And that just can't happen. It's only a second goal of the year from Kovacevic and Evans. And that is an inexcusable defensive play by Detroit. Very soft. Again, on that one, at least, I can't blame Alex Lyon because what the hell are you doing right there? I mean, that's not acceptable if you're the Chicago Blackhawks. Let's be real. So Montreal has been outscored by 51 coming into the game today, but don't tell them that against the Red Wings. They played well against them this year. More Sider now across the right side red line. All I can do is laugh. Here's Chirot. This one blocked again. Montreal has played a much better game than Detroit has right now. The shot blocks also dictate plenty of that. Hey, at least I can say thank you to the Red Wings for something. My, my Tuesday and off day. And now at least for work, I don't have to do a broadcast. As this one is now in off the end boards here. Dylan Larkin, Raymond trying to provide support. Minus 51 goal differential in the second and third periods. 28th in the NHL of 32 teams. Inexcusable effort by Detroit at home right now, considering everything that was in front of them. But really, it's been a month and a half of miserable hockey that has put them in this situation where it wouldn't have been this way. Offsides, 1338. We'll take a break. Detroit down by two again. <clears throat> Cool. So Cooper sent me a message. I'll read that in a moment. I think he's flying back, so no chance for him to be able to get any of this. In the second, it is – let me just do the abbreviation.
So let me read his text for any of you. I know Cooper Hopkins is always a friend of the program. So he goes, I just checked the score, and as I did, Montreal made it 3-1. I'm flying back from Seattle tomorrow, so I don't think I'll be able to join either way. Sorry I've been so busy, but we'll get playoff games for sure. Holding out hope for the Red Wings tonight. I appreciate that again from Cooper. I know that we will get some postseason games, but the regular season does not sound like that is going to happen. So hopefully continued safe travels there for Cooper. So right now, I can give you the updates here for across the out-of-town scoreboard. But if you're a Wings fan, none of that stuff matters right now. The Caps still up one nothing on the Bruins. The Penguins still up 2-0 on the Preds. It has not changed. Right now, the Red Wings are down 3-1 against Montreal Canadiens. And if they don't get a point here, they're done. So center ice is on draw. Raphael Hardy Pernard from a Jake Evans sauce makes it 3-1. And the Red Wings need to at least tie this game. Come for what a stop by Matimbo. As that was the Red Wings' best chance. And JT Comper at least has a pulse. I think Mickey Redmond's going to profile the latest goal against Detroit. As this is... Wide open, you know, the left side wings. So that's how Montreal starts it. Sauced right to Raphael Hardy Pernard, right down the middle of the ice. There is not a defender in sight. Not even a construction barrel. Ghost. We'll get this toward the net. Here is a delayed penalty against the Canadiens. And Detroit has the door open slightly as it looks like Michael Pozzetta. Going to go to the box for tripping Shane Gostas there. So if there is a time to score a goal, it is right now for Detroit. Again, you can talk about it as Cooper Hopkins and I do most of the time for our broadcast. Sometimes we laugh about it. He goes, John, how many times are we going to call a must win? Well, ladies and gentlemen, here's solo here for me for the next few days. This is a situation where it is a must score. The Red Wings season is on the line today. Larkin. Can't win the draw. And Matheson slap it around the kick point. Caulfield now for Alex Lyon as he'll settle this back down. And the Red Wings have to start again. Detroit. Dylan Larkin. He might be the one to provide the entry. It's now Kane. Raymond. Kane off the backhand. Open spot for David Perron. Is this near the left side? Goss to spare. Here's a feed. They're already selling out for shot blocks as Montreal. Here's a short side chance. Goes off the boards. Kane gets it back for Ghost. Now Patrick Kane. Somebody needs to score here. Patrick Kane off a couple bodies and sent down Alex Lyon. Lyon now and across for Ghost. And it's right to left again for Detroit. The first power play of the game. The Wings have it. They're down two and they need it. Raymond. And he loses the puck. Down to Alex Lyon. 55 seconds left to go. And the Red Wings power play. 12-10 left to go in the second period to break it. Entry. Here's a drop feed. High slot. It's Cider now. Cider along the right side wall. Good pass. Oh, Fabry gets denied. By Montembeau. What a stop that was. Sprong now to break it. Here's a chance. Copper. Power move toward the net. Copper whacking away at it. And Montreal falls in front of Montembeau. Copper gets punched in the head. And he loses his helmet. Cooler heads need to prevail. If any of the extra, if you're a Detroit fan, you got to make sure Montreal is on the end of it, not Detroit. You cannot retaliate. As Fabry, he has been snake bitten for about six games in a row now. Montembeau sticks out the right pad. Fabry can't lift him tight. That would have been a goal there, as it's turned away. Still 3-1, as Fabry can't believe it. I'd like to say that I can't, but I've seen too much of this storybook, and I apologize for any Wings fans of having to live the nightmare over and over again, but it just seems to happen that way. 
So 31 seconds left to go in the Red Wings power play. 11.47 left to go in the second. It's the first of the game for either team. Christian Dvorak against JT Comfort. So Comfort now, offensive zone draw. And they will take Dvorak out of this. That is their sentiment. They'll insert Jake Evans, who is a little bit better on the numbers, supposedly. I still will go with Comfort here. He'll win it back. Moritz Sider doesn't shoot. Sprung, right side. Fabry, he hit the side of the net. Wide open near the left side post. Red Wings now looking for a cross feed. It's Comfort. Comfort settle it down. Sprung has got a cross from if he wants. Now near the wall. Too hard off the end boards, but it's the cap. Alex Debrinkit fires, and Montembeau sees it right in the trapper. Seven seconds left to go in the power play. 11.23 left to go in the second period. Leading team in points in age 21 season or younger, Lucas Raymond, 69. 21 years of age, Joel Larkin, 21 in 2017-18, was 63. Steve Eisman had 90 when he was 21, and 87 when he was 18. That's a kind of a different cloth there for Steve Eisman. The Lucas Raymond an elite company as far as the Red Wings, who have been a team since the original six days who have been an elite status. Not over the last several years, though. And now Edmondson, he is taken down. Confer trying to help him. Montreal returns to full strength. Fabry, great pass. And Montembeau with an excellent stop. That on the Brinkett, 11.02 left to go in the second. Sam Montembeau is starting to look like Charlie Lindgren. I hope that maybe give you a shiver down your spine if you're a Wings fan. As he is stopping this puck. If you're Detroit, or let's say you lose in regulation, you're eliminated. Who are you calling up tomorrow? Because if you get a chance to do so freely, you might as well let the kids play, wouldn't you? As this is near the right side of the victory lap, essentially maybe a, a, a moral victory losing lap, maybe for the kids, but at least get them the experience. Lena, now cop. And around the end boards, now the right side. Here's a centering feed for Sider off the skates. Red Wings keep it in, though. Ben Chirot will drive. Chirot, backhand. He'll chip it off the net. This will be saved by Montreal. Fired in, hard in off the end of the glass. Red Wings, as Valeno is pushed against it. Cop now, trying to find it. He'll make a feed high slot. Red Wings still with it. It's more Sider off the spin. He's got to send it in deep. He's got nowhere to go. Christian Fisher loses it. Valeno over skates, and now this is with Montreal. As they'll fire it down across Alex Lyon. Lyon now. In off the end boards, it's Ben Chirot, Joe Valeno. As the Red Wings try to go ahead and locate, 10 minutes left to go in the second. Maybe 30 minutes left to go in the Red Wings season. They're down 3-1. They need at least a point. They really need two. So they'd have to score three goals right now if the score line stood right where it was. We're going to go past the halfway point of this game. 9.52 in the second. Montreal still up by a pair. <clears throat> Thank you guys for the likes. I appreciate you following along on the YouTube side. If you want to laugh, if you're an opposing fan, if you want to cry, if you're a Red Wings fan, be my guest. You can have all the emotions. Join in, talk about it, leave comments, and I will leave you updated across the scoreboards. We'll take another updated look at it here at the end of the second period. So far, I haven't been able to give you too many live updates because the one I had posted inside that comment box is still where we are, with the exception of Detroit being down 3-1. to one. So this is the doomsday scenario for Detroit, but you can't be surprised about the way it is. We knew going into it that Montreal of late could score some goals and maybe cause some problems. They have certainly done more than that. Raphael harvey Pinard is second of the year from the 515 marker from Evans and Jonathan Kobasevic. Make it 3-1 Canadiens. Alex Lyon, 8 of 11. He has been terrible. I'm sorry, got to say it that way. Sam Montembeau, 17 of 18, and a bevy of block shots from Montreal. Just how many, you ask? 20 to 4 for Montreal. 
Let me repeat that again. 20 to 4 on block shots. That's an all out effort for Martin San Luis squad. Is that coaching? Question mark. We talk about it enough with Derek Malone. I mean, come on now. Let's continue the madness. Play by play, black and away here. 9 45 left to go in the second. Red Wings down 3 to 1. This goes up into the Wings bench. We're at LCA right now. John Under with you on the Valley Sports Detroit extra feed because the Tigers are in action with the World Series champs, Texas Rangers. As Moritz Sider, they're profiling him with all the block shots that he does. I can't wait until he plays with Simon Edmondson next year, and maybe you see Axel Sandin Pelica. I don't know if we'll see a SP next year, but I do think we will see Edmondson with Cider. I don't think the days of Jeff Petrie and Ben Sherrod are going to stick around much longer. Only Mata I'm okay with, but that was also a defensive miss to Simon as well. So when I talked about this with Alec Nava before and with Cooper Hopkins, to me, this is not trying to be glass half empty. I think the Red Wings, you got Jake Wallman, you got Warren Sider, you got Simon Evans, maybe three, right? Red Wings still need four defensemen, and they need three goaltenders. That's not an easy fix. We talked about that of why Steve Eisman didn't make moves at the dead one. When you hear those comments with Dirk Lone about being just happy to be here, and we don't know what's going to happen next year because Nashville, uh, Pittsburgh, got that update there, 2-1. Nashville scored a goal, but, you know, the Devils could be better. We might not make it. Just happy to be here. That's a coach to me that gets one more year and gets fired at that point if you're making those comments. It's not the comments I want to hear. Red Wings, I had them on the outside looking in this year. It's a shame considering that's what could be the case. And expectations should have definitely changed after being ahead until a month and a half ago. But getting those comments, I give Derek a long year three, and then I fire him if we don't get a big playoff push and at least get it and win a round. Because if you're not making improvements here, as they've steadily done, but this time getting the playoffs by next year and win a round, uh, I'm done with Derek Long because I don't like those comments. And I don't like the fact that you hear that he doesn't meet with the team after they lose games. But you're going to have to now because you might be cleaning out your locker room. Lane Hudson. And off the forehand, this is a good pickup uh, for Montreal. Because they'll put this around the end boards. Nashville just scored, and then Pittsburgh scored right back 15 seconds later. 3-1 pens. Washington still up 1-0 on Boston. JT Copper, as this is now, near the right side. This will be back in around the end boards now. David Perron, as this is with Copper. He'll try to center it out. And again, Montreal's done an excellent job protecting Sam Montembo, and then when Montembo's needed to, he's made all the saves. That sounds like a hockey team that knows exactly what they need to do right now. 7.55 left to go in the second. This is fired in across the red. It'll bounce to Simon Edmondson now. Jeff Petrie will give this one back to Simon. Chris Cross for Patrick Kane, who's still trying to find his way out of the Red Wings defensive end. Two on two. Everybody back. Foleno now. Send it in deep from Cop. But it's another chip and chase that's unsuccessful. Jordan Harris. Christian Dvorak will go ahead and fire it around the kick plate. Only Mata for Pizzetta. This will go now for Harris. Then back for Christian now. Third line centerman for Martin Semele squad as it's Cop. Christian Fisher now softly off the inboards. 10 50. I should say 10 53 in that game, but 7 0. Five to go in our game. It's a 3-1 lead for Montreal. They can end the Red Wings season tonight. Ole Mata, Lane Hudson, as this is now near the right side in boards here. Detroit, Christian Fisher falls down. 
Let's go Red Wings chance. We're happening at LCA right now. It is a sold-out crowd who has had to sit on their hands for most of this game. Austin Zarnick, Daniel Sprong. This will be a ship that Sprong knocks it right to Montreal. They're doing an excellent job in this game, blocking shots, keeping it right out in front. Nick Suzuki, great pass near the right side boards. This is Armia. Send it in deep. Ben Chirot, Gary Slipkowski absorbs a hit. Ben Chirot loses it behind the cage of Alex Lyon. As this is Mike Matheson. They're on near the right wall. Suzuki, high slot for Mike. Good stutter step around Fabry. And a second effort gets the poke check away. Red Wings now. Near the left side red line. Here is Montreal. In tight, Matheson misses a short side net past Alex Lyon. And Cole Caulfield pinned to the boards by Moritz. Robbie Fabry trying to join in. 5.45 left to go on the second. It's Suzuki. Now off his backhand. Send this around the kick play. Stolen from your ice, Lovkowski. Outstretched pass. It's Daniel Sprung, but there's three Canadians back. Red Wings take a change for Dark Malone's squad. Sprung still with it. This will settle it down now. Ward Cider for defense. So Larkin's line is out there now. Here's the top four to break it. Gains the entry. Back pass. Rister. This one goes wide near the right side and boards from Larkin. It's close. And now here's a chance for Jake Evans near the right side. He is on. This will be chipped ahead. Red Wings now off the half span to get back in pursuit. Evans now. Raphael Harvey Pennard loses it. Top eight between Texas and Detroit. It's still one nothing. Dylan Larkin off the drop. Now right side. Larkin can walk in. Shoot. This one bounces off of Raymond. But again, just a funnel of bodies in front of Sam Montembeau. Slapper fanned on by Evanson. And now Evans will flip it in. Evans now to Simon Evanson. Turned over. Scores! Brandon Gallagher. That might be the nail. And Montreal off down by three. This is probably lights out for Detroit. A horrendous turnover in front of the net. And that's probably Angela Lansbury. Murder, she wrote. It's done. This goes near the left side. Raymond gets crunched near the boards. Fans wanted a penalty for that. But the Red Wings defense didn't pay attention. Simon Edmondson, it bounces off of Evans, right to Gallagher, all alone, and no chance for Alex Lyon. Montreal now up by three, and the Red Wings are dead. I'm going to say it right now. Unless they get a four-goal avalanche in this third period, this is going to be post-mortem for the Red Wings. And what an awful display over the last month and a half. I mean, honestly. Put themselves in this situation and just get trucked against the Canadians on home ice? Man, oh, man. You got to be even thinking about Derek Cologne's job security even through game 81. You might have Alex Tangay coach this team. Copper scores! He's got the pulse, but the Red Wings still down two. It's 4-2 now. The Red Wings still need three, but JT Comfer trying to ignite the pilot light. So Perron, wide open, is Comfer backdoor all alone. So the awful defense from Detroit was answered by Montreal, and I guess Detroit's going to take it for two. Is the score line now, as that was roofed expertly by JT. Again, if the season does end for Detroit, JT Comfort has been a really good piece for Detroit all year. Two goals, 10 points in the last 10 games. Detroit's life breathed in maybe a little bit, but the score line is still the same as it was as 3-1. Now it's 4-2. Cider. So Comfort from Piranha King. Here's Fisher. Opportunity now for Detroit. They gain the entry. They really need a goal right now. They need to get one at the end of the second. 3.37 left to go. We'll take a break. It is uh, roller coaster hockey, I guess. 
Wide open goals on both sides. 4 2. <clears throat> Oh, man. How do you guys do this every day? Even as a broadcast inside, I'm, I'm struggling. I am struggling. It's not because I root for one team either, but this is just a heart attack waiting to happen. Brandon Gallagher, number 14, number 15. None bigger than that. Boy, oh, boy. I'm getting into this play-by-play -play in a moment here. <clears throat> I saw Ice to Saul jump back in. So the latest one, JT Copper from Perron and Kane, but it's still 4-2. It was 3-1, 4-2, same score line essentially. So we'll get all those goals typed in. I did it with all the icings. So this is a defensive zone draw. Nick Suzuki now. Cole Caulfield against Dylan Larkin. I kicked him out of the draw. And we'll see if Dylan can go ahead and pick this one up. Detroit, they got time, 320 in the second. But I think they need a goal here in the second period. You don't want to be chasing everything in the third. The bracket, Brister high off the glass. As this will be with Alex. He'll make a centering feed. This bounces off a of Raymond who got nice reverse hit. He got cleaned up on the other side by the Montreal captaincy for Nick Suzuki. What an effort there for Nick. As this is now back around the end boards. Ben Chirot. He's crunched more. Cider tries to provide some punishment. Now Dylan Larkin. And then for Lucas Raymond. Pick up support there for Detroit. Larkin. He risks it near the left side. Goes up in a netting and on a play. 2.42 left to go in this second. And James Reimer, he was just, I believe, in game number 500. He gets a couple kisses from his daughters and some flowers as well. Probably are going to see James Reimer tomorrow, even with the win-loser draw. And again, you know, for me, honestly, James Reimer, again, his goals against average is about the same as Alex Lyon, but considering the way that all of that is gone right now, I think James Reimer probably should have played a little bit more. That's not hindsight 2020. I think that's just two years in a row now where Derek Lund's probably overworked the netminder. I think we would all would agree on that side. Again, I know nobody's really kind of taken the reins, so for Lalonde, that's what he would say, but you can't continue to burn Alex Lyon into the ground when he – Hasn't had this type of workload before. Gosses, Bear, Kane tried a one-hand stick dragon. Michael Pozzetta way off sides. He wasn't even paying attention. Dvorak and everybody else were already in the next uh, next exit. 
to 16. We'll have to go in this middle frame. John out here with you on the call. Coming into today, the Red Wings need at least a point to continue their season. I don't think they expected a 3-1 scoreline. Hell, I don't think they expected a 4-2 scoreline. That's what Montreal's got ahead of Detroit. They're going to need a monstrous last 20 minutes. If they're going to go ahead and extend their season, they need to get at least an OT. And they're going to need to at least get that extra point. They can do it if they're within a couple, but the way Montreal's play defense and block shots, they had a missed assignment there on the second attempt from Comfort, but still, they played a better game than Detroit. Robbie Fabric, the left side for Cop. Cop risks it. This one goes just wide. Near the right side, Bodes for Ghost. Ghost now. Daniel Sprong, he can shoot if he wants to. And this bounces off about three sticks and goes up and on a play. Shot board's very low. But that just means that Alex Lyon has stopped 9 of 13. There is not a save to come by. Two of those are all alone breaks. So two of those were going to be against him. I would say the other two, Alex Lyon needs to stop. That is where I'm at. Again, thank you for the likes as they continue to climb. I know the foot traffic has bounced in and out. You're just trying to watch in between the playoff chase, and I don't blame you. We'll give you more of those updates as we go across the board. As this is a minute 45 left to go in the second. Detroit still down by a pair. Intercepted across the neutral for Suzuki. Or Mia will give chase here for Montreal and Martin Semele squad. This is intercepted here. Comfort. He needs a hat trick. Comfort now. Gains the entry to left side wall. Still able to keep with it. Comfort. Drag his way over the middle. And the Red Wings, man, I wish they could have supported JT a little bit because he took that all the way to the house almost, and nobody picked him up on that side to help him out. Copper now gets a steal. Now it's Perron. He can't stay on sides. But good work here for JT Copper in this game. Even in a losing effort, if it comes to be, JT Copper, full marks to try to play in a big-time game to give his team some support and some hope. He's had the pulse. Where is the rest of the team? They need that production in the third. Again, there was a pass from Lucas Raymond that was missed to the break it. Raymond probably could have shot it, but again, I understand the two-on-one, the mindset there. Some missed opportunities, but those blown defensive assignments and failed puck clears and the killers on defense that Detroit has given themselves all year have done themselves no favors. That's been the storyline is the poor defensive core. Here is an opportunity for Montreal in the defense for Wayne Hudson. As this one goes back around the end boards, Red Wings do not clear this one out. As this goes in off the glass and stays in, what a quick puck movement here for Montreal. Very decisive about what they want to do. I like that. As Chirot Slavkowski taking off the puck, but Montreal still dancing around. Hudson absorbs a hit. This will be fluttered by Caulfield toward a backhand. Detroit. Alex to bring it. He'll make the outstretched feed for Raymond for whatever reason. And this goes off Cider. This will work for Montreal. As they'll settle it down for Ben Chirot. Chirot now will use the pinball, but this is right in between the Red Wings change. You couldn't touch it anyway. Five seconds in the second. That is how we end the middle frame. Detroit still down by a pair. Four, two. Montreal has got the lead. Four goals on 13 shots after two. And the Red Wings season might end in 20 more minutes. When we come back, we'll call the third, win, lose, or draw. So I'm going to go ahead as the goals are typed in just to give you a little stat reset. Shots on goal are not very big across the board for either squad. 18-13 for Detroit. Hits. 24-18 for Montreal. Face-offs. 
1917 for the Canadians. Power plays. 0 for 1 for Detroit. Nothing. Nothing for Montreal. So let's give you the score reset. So in the second period, Montreal does more damage. They were up by one after one. They're up by two after two. A pair of goals in both periods. So in the second, Rafael Harvey Bernardo, the sauce from Jake Evans, and a complete breakdown as the Red Wings give up a break and honestly a simple finish. That one. Give you the time of that it was for my notes as well. I got to go ahead and update that. 515. 3 1. <clears throat> and then a bounce off Edmondson clear as Gallagher at 1526 makes it 4 1 with another break. JT Comfer for Detroit responds. On the back door, 1559 to make it 4-2. JT Confer's got a pair of goals. He has been by far the Red Wings best player. And not because he's had two goals, it's just because he's been all over the ice, forcing steals and trying to make something happen. Easily the best Red Wings player. On the other side, I would give it to the team for Montreal with the amount of block shots. Again, let's give you that update as well. Block shots are 22-5. And what does that come down to, ladies and gentlemen? Is that effort level? Is that coaching? Is that both? How are they out blocking the Red Wings and shots 22-5? Doesn't make sense. So when you're thinking about Derek Lalonde, I understand that. Scoring updates across the league. Again, this will not matter if Detroit can outscore at least two goals to tie it. We're going to end this second here in PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh needs help. They need other teams to lose around them. Detroit would be a good start for them. Gustav Nyquist made it 2-1, 7-24 in the second. is 25th from Lionel Riley, Mike McDonough. Riley Smith responded at 8-20 from Lars Zeller, Chris Letang. Philip Forsberg at 17.36 from Ryan McDonald. Again, Nadelkovic 19 of 21. And you say Soros rebounded a little bit, 20, 21 and 24. Pittsburgh, though, in the opener, Cindy Crosby and Eric Carlson with goals. Crosby's got 42 so far this year. And Pittsburgh has a 3 2 edge. Looks like they have a power play. At the end of two, the Caps have a one nothing lead. If the Caps win, and let's say the Red Wings force OT to get a point, that still really puts the Red Wings in danger because they would have to lose against Philadelphia off the back-to-back. -back. Philadelphia, considering what happens, they might already be eliminated. Jeremy Swayman has stopped 21-22, but Charlie Lindgren... Boston's only fired eight shots at him. So that doesn't give me hope that Washington's going to lose this game. Eight shots on goal for Boston through two periods? That is uh, sleepwalking if I've ever heard of it. But Boston can clinch the Atlantic if they win today. So they just, I guess, sleepwalking through this road game. Don't even know what to say about that one. Rangers up 2-0 on the Sens. The Islanders up 3-1 on the Devils. Looks like the Islanders will get the third spot in the Metro. Sabres up 3-1 on the Lightning. That doesn't matter. The Lightning can't go up or down. So they just want to make sure they don't get injured. Late games here for you. All the seedings are done. Positioning different. The Oilers, they need to win out. And if the Canadians win, they can clinch the Pacific. They play the Sharks, that probably will. The Wild and the Kings, that is at 930. Kings have already clinched as well. They could get a wild card spot depending on what happens. Let me look at the standings just to clarify that. 
So in the Pacific are the Vegas Golden Knights. They are one point behind the Kings. The Kings have two games, playing one of theirs right now. If the Kings win and get two points, Vegas Golden Knights will be likely in the second seed where they will play the Dallas Stars unless they win out two games and they want to play Vancouver. They could play Edmonton if Edmonton wins out and Vancouver craps the bed, but I don't see that happening. Vancouver would have to lose both their games and Edmonton would have to win all three. They'll probably win against the Sharks and make it close, but I think Vancouver will hold on to that one seed. That's just me. <clears throat> so let's just check on the Tiger score real quick. Does anybody, while we're in here, want me to do the reset? for the playoff seedings in the East, for those that are listening in, because I can, if you want to go ahead and do that. Here's your updated scores on the board. I'm going to look at the uh, Tigers game just for a moment because they are playing the world champs. That was a 1-0 game for a long time. I'm assuming Tarek Skubal started today. Or the Tigers just had one hell of a pitching performance. It's still 1-0 right now in the ninth. Adolis Garcia is at the dish against Alex Fajardo. So they are trying to stay alive as much as possible. Out of urgency, I will stay with the wings, however, because you kind of have to. <clears throat> so we'll just go through it because we do have some people jumping in and out between the YouTube side again. Thankfully, humbly appreciate it. Add John right now, always on this and the Twitter space as well. So playoff scenarios. We'll go back through it. Scenario A. This could be the very likely one. Scenario A and B are. Scenario A is the Caps went out and they're in because they hold the tiebreakers. Scenario B is Detroit wins both their games and the Caps lose well, at least one of their next two against Boston or Philadelphia. Detroit will get the last wild card. Scenario C will be the Pittsburgh Penguins. They have to win out, and both the Red Wings and the Caps can only get two points out of the four. Scenario D would be for the Flyers which they could clinch, that would mean that Detroit, Pittsburgh, and Washington can collect no points, and the Flyers have to win in regulation tomorrow. Scenario E, which is also the least likely of D, no team gets points today in between Pittsburgh, Washington, and Detroit, and we all sweat out Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> so that is where we are. I think A and B most likely right now. Scenario A is holding up. For Caps fans, that's the most important. They win today, they win tomorrow. It's done. Tons of storage, so you can take all the pics. So many selfies. 
We got one more commercial break, and then we'll be going into the third. Again, I've given you the scoring updates in the bottom part of the box. John Ott on your play-by-play -play man. We're watching on Dolly Sports Detroit Extra. I was also told if you have a TV20, anything locally here across, you can also watch the Wings, even if you have rabbit ears. So they had those last games in. And that's a save of the middle finger from the collapse before the end of the year, as they did with the Pistons. Who knows? 20 minutes away, though. The Red Wings must score two in order to extend their season. If they do not, that just means that I don't have to do any games on Tuesday. I can get going with the playoff capsules. And maybe even, depending on how I feel, get them started tonight. Because if that's already done, at least, then maybe I can save Tuesday and do the Wednesday game if something does happen in Pittsburgh and work with Alec. So we'll see. If the Red Wings get eliminated today, then maybe that means no Tuesday for me. I'll work on Pop Capsules, and the Penguins are alive. I can work with that work on Wednesday. So that will let me get everything else posted on Friday for the eight matchups before the Stanley Cup playoffs begin on Saturday. I did get the go-ahead from Cooper Hopkins. I know he's traveling back from Seattle. So safe travels, my friend. You know, he's been a friend of the program for a long time. He says that we're going to get some playoff games in. So I know that that's going to be the case, and we'll have some fun with it. Either way, I have more playoff games upcoming because next week, in between the Muskegon Voyagers and the Waterford Sharks and the Michigan Independence Hockey League, out of the six teams, I'll have game three Friday night, and if needed in the best of five, game four, you can come join at Lakeland Ice Arena in Waterford. Be able to see that one if you're in the local area. It is a lot of fun. The Muskegon Voyagers have won that league the last three years. Again, I am working for the Sharks, but try to be able to call it fair down the road, just like how I do with this game, even though obviously local ties with the Wings, but still, you want to be able to call games straight down the middle because I think that's the best thing you should do as a broadcaster. That's just me, but I'm no professional. So 20 minutes left in the Red Wings season unless they score a pair. They are down 4-2 after two, and Montreal has proven, as we said in the Open, that there are no easy games in the NHL, especially when you drive the pace like Martin Samueli does. You had to watch out for guys like Nick Suzuki and Cole Caulfield, but it turns out when you play against the Red Wings, you got to look out for Brandon Gallagher, who's got a couple – and then broken assignments out in front as Gallagher, Gallagher got his second over failed Edwin Sinclair. And Raphael Harvey Pernard got right around only lot of the rest of the Wings defense. And two breaks for Montreal in that period. They scored on both. They lead 4-2. JT Confer with a pair of goals for the wing wheel. He's got his 19th all told. David Perron, Patrick Kane, Alex Debrink, and Ben Chirot have the assists respectively. On both goals. Alex Lyon is at a miserable night. Nine of 13. Two of those goals were on him. Two of them were not. Still, that wouldn't be good enough. Nine out of 13. 
and Sam Montembeau, 16 of 18. The reason why that sounds low is because Montreal's, Montreal also leads in block shots, 22 to 5. Yes, you heard that correctly. Effort, coaching, intensity, it's on one side, it's not on the other. And uh, for those that want to go at Derek Lalonde, and I even said this to you in the open after the 20 minutes, I think Derek gets one more year. He won't get another one after this. With all the other comments about saying happy to be here, and you never know with New Jersey, we might not make the playoffs next year. I don't want to hear those comments. So unless you get to the first round and make the push and then begin into the second, you got to make the playoffs next year first and foremost. Everybody expected them probably on the outside looking in. Expectations should have changed. They didn't. They might not make it tonight. Next year, they have to make the playoffs. That's the expectation. But for me, they got to win a round and at least make a push. Otherwise, Derek lalone has gone for me because I don't like those comments. And I also mentioned to you, too, about how he doesn't meet with the team after losses. Well, he's going to have to meet now because they're going to be cleaning out their freaking locker rooms. So there's a lot going on for Detroit right now, but it could all end in a span of about 20 minutes. So that is a situation at hand. We've also reset the scores across the league. We've also kind of reset the situation of clinching scenarios of the last WC2 spot in the East. Everybody else in the West is already done. This is game 81. <clears throat> so we're going to get settled into this third and begin, folks. About 20 seconds from puck drop. I'll take you through it. You can laugh. You can cry. Everything else in between. Let me hear comments. Whether you want to laugh at the wings if you're an opposing fan or anything else, I'm here for you. We'll go through it. So here's the live play-by-play -play upcoming scoring update. 3-1 Islanders over Devils. 3-2 Penguins over Preds. 1-0 Caps over Bruins. Caps win both. They're in. They got all the tiebreakers. And Charlie Lindgren's only faced eight shots. In our game, it's 4-2 Montreal. Red Wings now trying to take this way for left. Here's a slapper from the point. This goes off the kick plate. And this will be sent back around to Simon Evanson. Pinball. As it's working behind Sam Montembeau's cage. 20 minutes perhaps left in the Red Wings season. If they do not at least get the OT, their season is officially over. They're down 4-2 to Montreal. Simon Edmondson near the right side. You can't imagine what Detroit Radio Sports will be. Armia down the middle. Lion looks behind him. He makes the save, but another jailbreak right down the middle. This time former Colorado Avalanche, Alex Newhook. And that one probably should have been converted. But Alex Lyon's got to make saves at some point, correct? But still, just continuing to give up golden opportunity after golden opportunity. Why even make the playoffs? Joel Armia, he got right around Evanson, who had to chase. And Alex Lyon made the save. Defensive zone draw. Wings will win it. They are in the home reds with the white stripe. Patrick Kane fires it in. This will be a home-and-home home series right now. Montreal on the road with the white jerseys, blue pants, and the red stripe on the shoulders. Here's Slavkowski. Here's a nice feed. It's a three-on-two. Here's a pass right across the middle. It's sticked away from Cole Caulfield. Montreal does keep it in off the stutter step. Shot in toward for Lane Hudson. This gets deflected. And now Mark Savard. Near the right dot, Slavkowski blocked off the cider. Patrick King slowly for Ben Chirot. Sherratt does not get it out. He will use his body contact to pry the puck loose. And Lord Sider now for Ben. Sherratt has it across the rim. Little chip and chase here for Daniel Sprong. Detroit has either got to win all of these battles here or start to actually move the puck east and west and keep possession because I know what their structure and system say, but they just turn the puck over every single time they chip and chase. I know it's part of hockey, but the Red Wings do it ad nauseum. Fabry, right wing. He'll take a wrister around the inboards. He'll go wide. He was going for a slap pass, I guess, instead. This is right to Newhook. 
And we'll sell this one down. The glove across the wing wheel. Red wings go. We'll settle it down for Oli Mata. This pass from 100 feet will bounce. Away from Austin Zarnik. Montreal, loving in their own end now. As Raphael Harvey Pernard is going to go back and pick this one up. Off the back pass now, Michael Pozzetta. Pozzetta now as Jordan Harris absorbs a hit. Pozzetta gloves it down near the Montreal Canadiens bench. They don't know cross-checking penalties there. As this is now near the right side, Red Wings. This puck's not ice. It's Jeff Petrie against his former team. Here's a poor pass. Christian Dvorak fans on it. And now an opportunity one more time for Petrie. It's Joe Valeno off the flip. This one will go on the right side red line now. It'll be an opportunity to reset here for the assistant captain C. Matheson will watch this one get fired in. Picked up now away from Larkin. It's Ben Sherrod. He's being hounded by a couple of Montreal Canadiens. That looks new hook. Excellent work. Joel Armia back around for new hook. Right side wall. Backhand play. So move this in behind the cage for Ben Sherratt. Larkin. And across the wall. Intercepted now by Montreal. Matheson. Thought about it. The shot gets blocked. Raymond trying to force the pressure here. But he's going to run out of speed. And the brink is going to go off sides. 16.35. Up to go in the Red Wings season. And you can say it that way. Because the Red Wings are down by two. That's official now. The Rangers have beaten Detroit. one nothing. Uh, this has just gone final. As Detroit could shut out again, their bats have been silent. In this game, the Montreal Canadiens are getting the block shot category 22-7 to against Detroit. So the effort level has been there. Now the neutral zone face-off. This is Montreal, and they will get this out. It's a two-on-two. -two. Cole Caulfield near the right side. He wants the pass. He might still get there. He's back in behind the net now. Whole survey is Yuri Slavkowski. This is intercepted. Moritz Sider with the speed for Kane. Kane off the wall. Perron settle it down toward the net for Kane, but that is wide. And now Chirot will have it from Moritz Sider. Ben Chirot make an outstretch from 50. And across the neutral zone, it's Kane. Find the entry off the sauce. Right side, Perron, fan on the one tee. This is turned over. It's a two on two now. Montreal, Caulfield off the left side. Only Mata is there as he will retrieve the puck off the pin. Mata, as this one gets flipped in across the inboards now and gaining across the red. JT Comfort now and on the right side wall. Montreal off a couple of stick blades able to fight off is Joey Anderson. Anderson now will get this here from Mata. Mata will slam it around the inboards. I'm going to get Alec Nava in here in a moment. Once we get our stoppage, only Mata, as this is very contested here. Mata still trying to find it near the right side boards of Raphael Harvey Pernard. And now and across the neutral zone, I can finally get a chance to get Alec in here. And again, Alec, uh, once he joins in, he might know that Tuesday I might not even have to be on the call here, depending on what happens, as it's Jake Evans now on the right side boards. Jake Evans will take this one back to D. And this is too far for Bezetta as this is flipped back down by Detroit. Time is continuing to dwindle away, and Montreal has played a perfect defensive game for the most part. They had one break against J.T. Comfort, but the Red Wings had about three of those, and they've all resulted in goals. Gostas Bear now in his own end. 14.30 left to go in the Red Wings season. If this continues, is the chips too far for Larkin? And this is a game of keep away right now for Montreal. This is beautiful for Martin Samuel as this one's flipped in deep for Edvinson. One of Edvinson's failed clears was Brandon Gallagher's second goal. Red Wings off the rush. Raymond crisscross Larkin. We'll try to windmill. Now we'll see if Raymond can get back there. Edvinson, left side wall. He gets all spun around as this is in the offensive end for Detroit. High slot. Here's a wrister. This one goes way wide from Raymond. As Montreal keeps it around. Now toward the left dot. Here's a back feed. Red Wings, Raymond, Larkin, high slot, shoots. This one's blocked. Saved by Mountain Ball. Put toward the net. Couple extra rebounds. And now it's Lucas Raymond. And around the kick plate for Edmondson. Edmondson, the break it. Cross. Raymond, what a stop. Rebound. This one gets blocked. Mountain Ball got a piece of that. He couldn't even see it. 
Now near the left side, try to bank it off his back. This goes off the outside of the cage for Petrie. Red Wings are buzzing. This is their best pressure of the game. Now 13-20 left to go in the third. Kane shoots. This one goes wide. Edmondson. This is the desperation, but where has this been all game? Edmondson now. Kane. Larkin near the right side wall. Kane emerges with it. Kane. High slot. Shoots. Saved by Montembeau with the left glove. And this one finally sent back down the ice. This will get bumped. Picked up across the wing wheel, but here comes the wings again. Perron, left side wall. They're sensing the moment right now. Chirot with a blister. This one is not held in by Cider. And now it goes back to Chirot. Then Chirot can resettle this down across the left side red line. Kane, sauce Perron, left wall. Perron, he's pinned as Montreal got three players here. Savard trying to find it. coffer has got a couple. He's trying to locate it. They're starting to kill time. Fans are finally starting to get into this here. The shot attempts are 10-4 in the third. Red Wings are finally showing a pulse besides for JT. Now off the rush. Here's Montreal. Wouldn't this be a killer as this goes near the right side off the end boards? This is Gallagher off the outside of the cage. Good finish of a hit here for Montreal. Joel Armia, as this will be settled back down. Comfort. Sticks and lanes right now. That's what Detroit needs. It's Ben Chirac in his own end. This will get this off his backhand. Red Wings, find the entry. Comfort now. Near the right side dot. Goes back in behind the net. Montembeau butterfly left side. JT Comfort's pass trying to look for Sprung. He's got it in tight. Cross pass. This was a very bad one as it's intercepted by Montreal. They can take a change. Only Mana will pick it back up. Non-stop action right now, and I promise we will get Alex's thoughts in a moment, as this is in around the inboards now. Fabry gives chase. Cop does as well in the cage mask. But this is Montreal, Jordan Harris. We'll take a ball flip. Goss is fair. They'll clear off the skate. Montreal gets possession. As this is near the right side for Nick Suzuki. Good stick handle. High slot. Alex Lyons got it. Alec, you can join in now. It's finally stopped with all the action. Detroit desperate. Almost banked it off of Montembeau. But they got 11 minutes left in their season. I'll be honest, John. I'm just as nervous as you are. Not only because the Red Wings are the potential must have this kid, but the Penguins are in position. We're up 4 2 now. Echo feels to getting a big goal. It was a 4 2. But I'm also paying attention to Washington game. And that I game at the same time. It's actually, we're watching four games at the same time. Washington's up one nothing. I was up four one. They may lock up that third metro spot. I was shocked, and I had to look again in the box score to confirm. But Ken Daniels and Mickey Redmond said, "Guess how many chances Charlie Lindgren only had to face after two periods? Eight shots on goal for Boston after two periods against the Caps." No, it doesn't make any sense, Alec. And again, it'll be one of those situations where if it looks like it's going to be what it's going to be, then the Penguins will still have life. But that also means that the Caps are going to have to probably lose that game against the Philadelphia Flyers on Tuesday. If they do, that would set us up for the Wednesday side for the Penguins in their final game of the season. I'm going to have to be grudgingly root for the Flyers tomorrow. Yes, I know. That's a, a hated blood rival, but you're right. And, again, that's I'm having to root for the Bruins here, again, like we are. I mean, I don't think that's a team that we normally would root for, but it is the time of year. And it's a shame. You know what it is, Alec, because you, you made the great run to get in there. You're right. They go with the nine points. And everyone else fell apart. So maybe Pittsburgh didn't have that same opportunity. But if you're in Detroit, you had an opportunity to have, you know, control your own destiny. And when you don't, it makes things really painful. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to attribute this to bringing Patrick Kane, but it felt like this was more of an overachieving sort of sense given the hot start that perhaps it was not going to be sustainable at any moment. And perhaps the analytics department, they may have been proven right by it, but we yeah. don't know how certain we are because defensively the effort has to be there. The goaltending effort has to be there. It came from Alex Lyon. Gotta be there for everyone else, especially James Ryder, Billy Buso. Maybe we can talk about Trey Augustine or Sebastian Kosa down the stretch. 
Yeah, we can. I agree with you, though, on the second part for defense. The brinket, this one goes up and out of play as we'll get some pushing and shoving. You give me some updates on the Pittsburgh side when you get them. I see 15 28 in the third. Yeah, right now, see, 15 minutes left. Nashville has to puck. And Allison Elkovich making his 10th straight start, which I question initially because of overuse. But Tristan Jari down the stretch, not really looking that sharp, but he did play okay against Boston, although it wasn't enough to get us to victory in the end. Yeah, maybe that small rest was the chance of getting pulled there for Mike Sullivan. He went right back with Alex Nadelkovic, and the Penguins have a 4-2 lead. I did message to you a little bit. We went back and forth about maybe the effort level for the Predators. You are right. The seeding in the wild card can definitely move, although they've clinched. I did feel like the Penguins would win this game today, but I'll be honest with you. I thought the Red Wings would lose at least one but I didn't think it was going to be the home game. They got uh, two goals that they have to get. A second octopus has been thrown on the ice now. So the Red Wings fans are pulling out all the stops here in what could be their final home game of 23-24. Yeah, out the here, we are also having our final home game of 23-24. And also, as another game that I want to put up worth mentioning, Matthews on the 70 goal squad against tomorrow in the Panthers' home and regular season finale. Leafs and Panthers 7.30 Eastern. That's a good call by you. And I guarantee, Alec, you're going to – I think you're getting history tomorrow. You're going to enjoy that call. Oh, uh, yeah. We haven't seen a 70 goal scorer since Tamu Solani and Alexander Mogilny in 93. It's been 31 years in the making. Perhaps tomorrow may be the night. Of the Panthers, they're evenly matched against the Maple Leafs offensively with their stout defense. Yeah, they are. And again, that could be a, a very fun matchup. De depending on what happens, that's also a first round preview. Yeah, that's barring anything in this game that could spark Boston into jumping upwards. So if the Bruins do lose, it gives the Panthers a little more breathing room into getting that elect division title. However, that warrants a Boston loss in their game 82. So 10-25. Here's a chance off the rush now for Montreal as they won the draw. Wide open was Matheson for a risk, but I think that got blocked before it ever hit out with slime. Goss to spare. We talk about the defensive core. I think the Red Wings need four defensemen and about three goaltenders. That's kind of why Eisman didn't make the moves during the deadline. There's a lot to do on this team still. They were probably where we expected them to be, but expectations should have changed considering what happened before falling down. But if next year, if they don't make the playoffs and make a push, I think Derek Malone's probably gone. Here's a chance in tight. Another block for Montreal. They have been excellent in that regard. I'll pull a bit up in the team stats right now as it's Perron with a wrister. This one goes wide. The blocks are 25-8 for those that are just joining us in favor of Montreal. They've done a great job, and so has Montembeau. Here's a chance, and he'll make the save. Does Sam? 9.27 left. We go to break. I feel like Montreal is one of those teams that can be a pain the buck defensively. I mean, we had to experience this last year. We experienced this in 2020 in that playoff series, even though the record didn't show it. But Montreal, I feel they're one of those teams that can be stymied or defensively. I feel this game is going to show that. Again, from everything that you just talked about, Alec, I'd have to believe that because, hey, you look at this. I know it's the head coach, Martin Sam Lee, but John Tortorella would be happy with this many block shots. Given that he's a defensive-minded coach, <laughs> given his past days with Tampa, Columbus, New York, or wherever he's been, and even his present day with Philadelphia, he'd be happy with this effort from Montreal. So what do we got right now? Are you in action with uh, Pittsburgh and Nashville? We're at commercial break right now. It's showing 4-1 Iowa still, 5-55 left to go. Washington up 1-0 still. The shot totals 24-11. That is just unbelievable. I mean, it kind of feels like Boston, even though the game is close, I mean, maybe they can get a couple and pot it late with David Pasternak or McAvoy or Zaka, Quill, whoever. But that just seems like a performance where you fell asleep at the wheel. 
that feels like it. They, they almost had a good chance, but that for some reason missed the net entirely for Boston. And then begrudgingly rooting for the Bruins and getting a victory over the Caps, <laughs> given that I need the Caps to lose if we were to stay in the wild card hunt. If the Caps do win, uh, I have to be begrudgingly rooting for the, root for the Flyers tomorrow. Yeah. Again, at least for me, I, I guess I can say this is a relief. If the Wings lose tonight, I don't have to worry about a darn thing. It's over. Well, if, if not you guys, maybe us. Yeah, exactly. So you'll get to sweat a couple more days, and at least I get to breathe again. <laughs> well, think about the long range game. And get back to the, the, the drawing board. Think about next year, what needs to change. Probably bring in another defenseman or two. Have Edmondson play at the big leagues for his first full time season. Scores right off the draw! It's the break it, and the Red Wings are back within one. Don't get into assistance from Alex Ovechkin's office. Doesn't consider speaking about the Capitals. Left shot off the face off. It's quick face off win. That is big key here. One of the biggest keys. If you're getting gold, if you want to quit the draw, get it quick off the face up, fire it fast, and make sure that the goaltender doesn't exceed the puck at all. All four of those things happen at once. Good yeah. job by Dylan Lord and take it away. Lots of those eyes. Lucas Raymond also there if that puck were to go from the 12. If Montebo were to yeah, kick it out for a rebound. But either way, good momentum for Detroit. Perhaps staying alive here. Oh, goodness. This goes near the right side. Alex Line try to chip it away. And now the Red Wings off the rush. Comfer will put it around the end boards now to break it. It's been really hot of late when the Red Wings have absolutely needed it. This 27. They got some energy now. The Red Wings are happy. But here's a turnover. Two on one. Caulfield fires it high. And this will go into the netting. Disagree with you. There's been a couple missed passes there for Detroit. There's been blown assignments everywhere. This one goes off the blocker of Alex Lyon. If they ever need Alex Lyon, we've been talking about it over the last few days. He's got to shut this down. He cannot give up anymore. Red Wings have time, but it's going to start to bleed away. Pittsburgh up 4 2 on Nashville right now. Washington's still up 1 0. Washington controls their own destiny. If they win on Tuesday, it's over, as it's Raymond. Larkin will pick this one up now and across the right side wall. Settle back down for Moritz. Larkin now toward the net. Montembeau makes the save. And that was a good one there. Looking for a deflection. And that was no easy save. He had to jump in front of it to make this miss stop. I mean, it almost looked like it was going to go in for a split second, but a quick reactionary save by Montembeau to deny Dylan Larkin. So 8-11 left. I got Alec Nava here joining me, as always, and I appreciate it, as we always do. Alec, you've been doing some heavy lifting over the last few days. You've been doing a lot of look-ins. We've been doing NCA final. We saw Caitlin Clark was taken first overall. No surprise. Another big day on the docket. Andrew Kopp and the full cage mass. Here's a one-time right off the draw. And all of a sudden, the Red Wings start to look pretty good off those draws in the offensive end, as it's Simon Edmondson. Eight minutes left to go in the Red Wings season unless they get another goal, and they get it 4-4 as this one's fired in. Let's go Red Wings chance right now at LCA. This could be the final home game that they see unless maybe they can win out and get some help from the Caps. Pittsburgh needs a little more help, but they need to really win out too, and we're monitoring that as well. They're up 4-2 right now against Nashville. This is now Evans. We'll fire it in. Holy Mata, former Penguin. I'll pick it up now, softly chip it off the glass. As this will be out the center, it's bounced a couple times, and the Red Wings defensive core will pick it up. 
Main opportunity for Daniel Sprong. Good stutter step. He shoots it just wide. Robbie Fabry will get it back to the D side. Here's a shot in through the traffic. Andrew Kopp trying to use his body to hold on to the puck. It's centered on him from Fabry. Montembeau. It's loose. Red Wings trying to find him. Montembeau looks behind him, loses his goal stick, and this will go back to Detroit. My goodness. We're seeing everything, John. Everything unfolding. All the pressure. You know the circumstances. Everything's on the line for the Red Wings. Win or go home. All the shots right in the front of the net. I mean, it was just pounding Montembeau. The arrow of shots all around. Good pressure. Kane. This one blocked. See if a three on two can develop good spacing here. It's new hook. This one blocked. Goes over the goal crease. Harvey Pernard will smartly send this right in front of Lyon. 6.28 left in the third. Close, but no cigar so far. Detroit's still down one. And meanwhile, in Pittsburgh, the Penguins have killed off a Nashville power play. Nashville's power play ranking 21st. But the Penguins, Cody Hill, has been the better of the two special teams, as funny as it is to sound like, because normally it will be the power play capitalizing for the Pens. It's the penalty kill. They're ranked ninth, and they showed it. So at least the Penguins are getting what they need right now, Alec. Again, first and foremost, that's the only other thing you can say right now. We're still monitoring the caps. That's about 544 left in the third. This featured game is Montreal and Detroit. Montreal is up by a goal. It's 4-3. The Red Wings' time left in their season is about 6 minutes and 20 seconds. If they don't tie it, Suzuki. In around the kick play now as the fans get right back into it. Chira, as this is knocked away from Yuri Slavkowski, and back into the Red Wings' end it goes. This will be slammed around the end boards, and the jerseys in red will try to take this one right to left. Here's an opportunity to break it. We'll get the feed near the left side wall. And on his back pass, he'll turn. It's Chirot. Crisscross Cider. Cider fires it toward the cage. To break it again, we'll get a puck retrieval. Detroit now desperate for a goal. As Raymond, this one goes off of Montembeau's right pad. Montreal now will flip it across the glass. Chirot now for Cider. Near the wing wheel, this will be an entry pass right across the middle up a one on three. And this is off the rush for Raymond. And it goes off a stick and on a play. And the Penguins are grand. They're getting a power play. Well, normally we will be talking about their power play. This has not been the case this season. They're actually one of the worst in the league, as odd as it is to say, in the Sydney Crosby era. But a chance to go up 5-2 on the Preds' PK. That'll be something to watch for an Alec if the Penguins do get in. I would have to think, you know, so just me talking out loud, for you talking about the power play unit, that's got to improve. I think they'll find a way to get something going in the playoffs because that unit's too good. Yeah, and it is too good to be this low, especially with a unit that's quarterbacked by Eric Carlson. We're still one up between the Caps and the Bruins. and a and and then on a backhand by Brian Ross. That was blocked in front. Caps with 523 left in the third period. Bruins with just 14 shots on goal, as shocking as this is say considering that they're one of the more high-octane offenses in the NHL. They're in the Atlantic Division conversation for a reason. Yeah, that's really hard to believe, as you said, between those shots on goal. And I just I keep looking at that scoreline with burning intent, Alec, hoping that it changes for the Bruins. <laughs> Hopefully so. And, and I mean, in the worst way possible, yeah. considering that Washington, they're essentially the team with that low of goal differential, it's like, I don't know how they're there, but they are. They are there, and you and I, first and foremost, give them full marks for being there and getting the job done. And Spencer Carberry doing enough, right? We give them full marks for that. But still, in the back end of both of our minds, and that's not putting words in either one of our mouths, we just don't no. feel like they're going to do anything when they get into the postseason. No, and they're running – if they were making it, they'd be running into a team as essentially back like they never left, just like Chase Elliott this past Sunday at Texas. So we'll have to see what happens. That time continues to dwindle. It's 4-11 in that game, and the Caps still have a 4-1 lead. Again, as Alex has been giving us updates here for Pittsburgh, 4-2 pens, 8-43 left to go in the third. The Red Wings need at least an OT point to continue their season. 
They're down by a goal. It's 4 3, and they got 527 left in the third. JT Copper, offensive zone draw, but now I guess it's going to go to David Perron at the kick out against Christian Dvorak. They already scored off the power play or off the face off like this once. We'll see if they can do it again. Comfort will put this in deep as it's Oli Mana. We'll see when the Red Wings pull their net minder. They're going to have to do so soon as this will be sent back. Martin San Luis squad will make an outstretch pass. This will be away from Anderson by Oli Mana. This will safely put this here for Shingas to spare. But I guess it's not so safe as this is a few times the Red Wings. This time they dodged a bullet, though. But, I mean, it was right in the middle of the circles again. As now the forwards will take a change. Oli Mata. Now off his backhand, it's Perron and for Kane. Can Showtime do it again? He's got it near the right side. Put it back around the embankment for JT Comfort. As this is near the left side red line. Outstretched pass for about 50. Here comes Montreal. Nice entry here off the clearing. Goss bear on his backhand. We'll send it the other way. Again, it's house money right now for the Montreal Canadiens. They can just play spoiler. Dylan Larkin, one on four. Larkin still with the puck. Off the backhand, he does get some help, and he'll get it right back. Number 71 is going to get toward the middle ice. Now backhands it toward the net. What a shift for the captain's C. But this is now with Montreal, as this will be flipped by Savard. Well down, Edmondson. Edmondson now, Larkin off the drop. This will fire it toward the net. Montembeau's got it with the glove hand. Tostello is 1-0 Washington. That clock's starting to become Boston's enemy. They're up to 15 shots after being down to just eight in the first two periods. They're almost done with that shot total they had in the first two periods combined. But they still need to tie and goal. That's going to be two. I was going to say, what did the Bruins do last night? Did they party at the Monument? <laughs> Yeah, we kind of figured that out, like, didn't we? Considering yeah, where we that was going. That out. This it's, it's Kane's Islanders again. Yeah. Unless, unless if they jump the Rangers, the Kings. And I, I don't think that's going to bode very well for the New York Islanders. I'll say that Patrick Waugh is going to at least get a taste of some playoff action. Good for them. They had to do something, but going up against Carolina, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah, basically, they beat you with your own game last year. What makes them think that it's going to change this year in our opinions? 3-10. Left to go in the Red Wings season unless they score another goal. I think the feed downstairs is a little bit ahead of mine. I know Alec Vision is as well, so it'll be bated breath for me. Shane Goss is there. We'll try to get this one right to left. Red Wings now get the advantage on the shot board 30-17, to but nothing bigger than this. Patrick Kane. Fire it in. This could essentially be the last home game of the year. Patrick Kane will lose it, and now the Canadiens will push. When does Derek Lalonde push that button and take Alex Line out of the goal crease? It's not right now, as it's just fired in. This takes a bounce off some Red Wings who change, and you have to look at Alex Line at this point. 225 left to go in this third. Red Wings must get acclimated. There goes Lion. Red Wings sees it on the line. It's Dylan Larkin. Right side drop, looking for a deflection for 71. And this goes around the inboards now. Fabry, he's got it on the right side wall. Ghost, now to the right side for Perron. Back to Shane, fires off the outside of the cage. Where is it? It's a bad scramble for the puck, and it's loose. The Red Wings now have it in the high slot. Somehow that wasn't blown dead. Here's Perron. Near the left side dot. If it's going to go down in flames, it's going to go down in uh, spectacular uh, Gloria colors. We'll say that. 140 left to go in the third. Bomb off the outside of the cage for Ghost. Camera flashes everywhere now. Ghost now for Perron. He's got it. Left pass. Here's a one across. This one jumping out of the air for Goss's Bear. Keeps it in. Right side dot. Here's Shane now. Here's one for Perron. Red Wings sees it on the line. They need a lane. Here's Raymond. Scores!
I almost felt like I was going to cry, Alec, and I'm trying to keep neutral here. I had the I had the octaves. I had everything. I'm watching this right now. It depends on uh, Predators, too, so I hope you get the points, my friend. We need the Bruins here to do some business. I mean, you're asking for it right now, but all sorts of too soon to say in the heat of the moment. I want to look at this on the outstretched glass. Is Lucas Raymond becoming a star? We could be seeing that as the next great star winger for the Red Wings coming to fruition. We're, we may be loving to see that. All the offseason is just paying off, and he's taking that mentorship from veterans like David Perron. It's working out. So the Red Wings... Have an opportunity as their season is still alive now. It's a tie game. Cop loose out in front. Cop are trying to find it. More bodies are hitting the floor. It's drowning pool everywhere. 50 seconds left to go in the third. Cop now. Comfer. This is an opportunity. Good pin across the wall, but you better look out now. Here's Montreal off the rush. And even if you get to a three on three, you got Caulfield, Suzuki, and Matheson. So nothing is a given. Chirac. Cider gets upended. Here's Caulfield now near the right side. Oh, chance somehow. Lions sees it. I don't know how. Here's Montreal. A couple touch passes. This is going to be absolute chaos. Back and around the net. It's Trot. Cop will find it in behind his own net. 15 seconds to hit off the referee's face. Now the Canadians keep it in for a moment. Down to 10. I wish I was exaggerating, but I'm not. This goes here for Cider. Down to five seconds. Alec, we go to OT. The Red Wings are going to live till Tuesday, but they need this extra point. Oh, badly needed. No, we're still waiting on the Bruins. They are at the dead last seconds of the third period. Patrick Maroon was crowding Charlie Lindgren. The Caps fans in attendance, they love that save from Lindgren. They know they want a playoff spot. The Islanders have clinched. So now it's down to the WC2 between the Penguins, Caps, and the Red Wings, unless the Flyers get some devil's magic on their way. There's an empty net. The Predators keep it away from Crosby. Crosby pokes it forward, 235. We have a timeout here by Boston, but overtime awaits us here at the LCA. Now it might come down to, unless something happens in this 26 seconds, which we hope, uh, Tuesday, I don't know what you're doing, my friend, but maybe it'll be Caps and uh, Flyers for a live look in as well. I, I mean, I can do two Red Wings games in a row. We can try it. But, uh, yeah, if the Caps find a way to get this win, I don't know what motivation is going to be left for the Flyers unless they want to play spoiler because essentially they're going to be eliminated after today. Essentially. And, and, and given the standings right now, Washington may win, Pittsburgh may win, but keep in mind Pittsburgh is one point behind Washington. If the two were to tie in total points, the Penguins have tiebreaker. So the Penguins do have the tiebreaker over the Caps? Yes, if they were to have the same amount of points at the end of the year. Oh, last ditch effort is not going to do wonders. Bingo. Washington wins 2 nothing. Wow. So at least you guys do have the tiebreaker. So we really need tomorrow for all of us. And again, I hate to say we, but this is just a situation that Alec and I are in between the wings and the pens. We need the Philadelphia Flyers to take two points tomorrow. We need the Flyers to take both points because one point is not going to be enough. Two points are what's needed. You have the Capitals lose in regulation if we were to have some breathing room. So at least for Alec, again, he's got the tiebreaker over the Caps. The Red Wings don't have tiebreakers over anybody. So that's uh, 
the situation they find themselves in Tuesday is uh, it's going to come down to game 82. We kind of thought that might happen in some of these division races, but honestly, schedule makers, Gary Bettman, I think he's probably the happiest of everybody. And I guess we have to get some coverage on Wednesday if that were the case. So overtime, Larkin's line versus Evans' line. I got Kane and Suzuki. I'll take Larkin. And I'll take uh, Cole Caulfield. We'll split the difference. I think we'll get one of them. 4.45 left to go in OT. It's Jake Evans. I mean, maybe I should take Brandon Gallagher. Jake Evans near the right side. As this is an opportunity. And Matheson off the spin. This is a must-get point for Detroit. Again, their season's still – it's going to go to Tuesday. But, I mean, considering the Caps just got the win in regulation – OT points not going to do much of them either. They'll be buried by Tuesday. So they're going to have to find a way to somehow get this extra point and then get it again tomorrow. Evans, this one blocked. Red Wings, push. It's a two-on-two. Two. Goss to spare. Outstretch feed. Larkin, he's denied by Montembeau, and they'll take the whistle. Just in time for Montembeau to close that five-hole. And he knows just reactionary <clears throat> from them to anticipate. The shot come from Largo and speeding down the lane. He beats out, guess who? Lane Hudson, who is fresh off of Boston University, working at number 48. You mentioned to me Lane Hudson the other day when we were talking about it and having him join with Montreal. He got the first point of the game. He got a primary assist. So he played pretty well in this one right now. I'd like to speed in his game. But again, for the Terrier, as you mentioned, I think he's getting a good taste of NHL action. Offensive zone draw. This will be... Back across the boards here for Cider. Again, I'll be happy if the Red Wings get these points, but it's going to matter what happens tomorrow in Game 82 because the Caps took care of their business. They do so again tomorrow. It's over in curtains for everybody else. As this is now Raymond. Can he do it again? Kane near the right side off the half spin. It's Cider. Now an opportunity for Detroit. Very patient. It's Patrick Kane. Left circle. What a stick handle. And so we'll send this one high slot. Shot. This one goes maybe off the netting. 323 in OT. I think off the stick and then off the netting and then it went up. So Pittsburgh's going to win 4-2 over Nashville. Nashville's need me be a little anxious here knowing that this and their WC1 hopes may be a little bit in jeopardy. Yeah, because if you're Nashville, again, we still have to talk about two. Things could happen between Vancouver and Edmonton, although Edmonton would have to win out. They're playing the Sharks today, so they already got the lead. I think that's a given, you and I can both say. But for Nashville, yeah, do you want to play Vancouver or do you want to play Dallas? Because either one of those is not going to be very fun. It's not. The, the, the biggest way that you're going to shut them down is and you put up a defensive master class against and both either one of Vancouver or Dallas. It's basically, you have to shut them down all four of those lines. It's a very balanced attack. So Nashville, they could steal it. Larkin gets it off the post! Oh my goodness, it was top of the bar. It was going to be Montembeau. And now, new look. He's racing with Slavkowski. And this one blog, Yuri Slavkowski, he's looked pretty good in this game so far as well from what I've seen. I want to see more of him coming into the next year. Top of the bar and out. Red Wings, it's Raymond. They have to get this goal here, whether it's a shootout or right now. Larkin, biding his time. Is he going to spin out? No, he's not. He's going to keep this in the high slot. As it's Goss to spare. Kane, stutter, drive to the net. He gets taken down. No call against the Canadians for Patrick Kane. I'm not trying to buy one there, but that's pretty interesting. Here's a chance. Slavkowski, he'll drop. He'll take his change. And now Montreal will have it. This is in the high slot for the Canadians. Now new hook. Sweet skate. Still stays with the cats in his face. And Matheson sent it back up. Two minutes in this OT if we even need it. And otherwise, we go to a shootout. Suzuki, drop pass, cross the wing wheel. All sorts of speed. Caulfield, what a move. As this is taken away, they stick the side by Lyon. And Sider is going to let everyone else take a change here for Derek Lone's squad. Red Wings season continues, but again, if the Caps take care of business against the Flyers tomorrow, it won't matter. 
Here's our wrist group. This one goes back up the backboards, but the fans are happy now. They're into this. 4-4 four, four is the score line. Here's an entry off a one-on-one. -on -one. Cole Caulfield. What's he going to do here? Off Alex Lyon. And now the Red Wings. Off the rush. It's Larkin. Larkin's got speed. Cuts inside, and this one's blocked. As number 71 tries to get to it now. 110 left to go in the OT. Goes in off the glass. Mike Matheson off the back skate. Slowly gain the entry here for Martin San Luis squad. Pivot. This is on the right side. Matheson touch. Montreal still dancing. It's Matheson with Suzuki. Mike's still working with it right now. 50 seconds left to go in the OT. Good puck possession. Here's Anderson backing around the net. Still trying to find a lane. Red Wings keeping that triangle. Now near the right side blue line. They're spread out a little bit more. Montreal very patient here. Left side dot, slow up. They wanted the slap shot. In between the circles, Red Wings, outstretched pass if they can get it. Here is a two on two. Raven scores! You're exactly right. Again, it's going to come down to Tuesday. Pittsburgh is going to have to wait one more day. And as Alex said, depending on what happens between Detroit and Washington tomorrow, Wednesday might not even matter for Pittsburgh. So right now for Pittsburgh, they need Detroit pretty much to lose tomorrow and Washington and then win the game on Wednesday. If both of those things happen – Alec and I will be here on the call on Wednesday to call the pens. But I guess I will be back here tomorrow for the Wings and the Canadians one more time with a very soft look at the Flyers game alongside the Caps. I thought, Alec, I'd have a little more confidence in the Boston Bruins to get it done. Now, tomorrow, I am very concerned. Given <laughs> that Washington... We may know that they're still kicking it, despite being beaten down, battered throughout the season. I mean, that goal differential is no joke. And it feels like it may be a quick exit for them if they were to beat it. Detroit, things may be looking high for them later down, but still you need to rely on the Flyers to lose and to win that game against the Caps. This is literal must win for the Flyers, plus the Red Wings. Yep. At least one point was a Flyers win. Basically gets them in unless if you look at the Penguins. Yeah, no, you're right. That's exactly what we're looking at. And, Alec, if it all comes to fruition, we'll figure out everything that happens with the Pens on Wednesday. So you'll get the rest. But, again, you and I, I think, will be a little bit having our stomach churning because Flyers, everybody around here is going to be a temporary Flyers fan tomorrow. They need that to happen. Pittsburgh needs both. It's very possible, considering what happened with Detroit today against Montreal, that we could see another one of these games tomorrow. Yeah, yeah not to mention that I am covering the Panthers Maple Leafs game tomorrow. So that's the awesome Matthew 70 mm -hmm. watch. Awesome NBA play in low games as well. Lakers, Pelicans, and I think the Western Conference is up first in the NBA play-in, if I'm not mistaken, so i got to check again. It is the Western Conference that's up first. Lakers, Pelicans, Warriors, Kings. So we will check into all of that. So at that user, Alec, on the Twitter X side, he's going to have all the stuff in between the Maple Leafs and Austin Matthews 70 goal watch. and give you all those play-in looks. I will focus on the Red Wings, but give you the looks at the Philadelphia Flyers and the Caps as well. If the certain situations come in hand, Alec and I will be back together on Wednesday 
for the Pens and the Islanders to see if the Pens get in at game 82. I will talk to you soon, my friend, and we'll probably also text back and forth. Good luck tomorrow, and I we, let's hope for some good things for both of our squads. Yeah, no, no fingers crossed, John. Yep, yeah, we'll talk soon. <clears throat> Chef, are you still here, my friend? Thank you for all the LGRWs. So Alec and I set the scene. You already know what's going to be. So the Red Wings can win tomorrow. But as happy as I am with you, we need, I can say we now because it's all over. The Flyers have to get a point tomorrow. They got to force the Caps' hand. I couldn't believe the Bruins couldn't get it done today. So if the Flyers get one point against the Caps and the Wings win tomorrow, they're in the postseason. I'll be here tomorrow between the Canadians and the Red Wings one more time. If that gets out of hand, I'll flip them between Philadelphia and Washington. So this is what you need. Red Wings victory tomorrow and the Caps to lose in overtime at best. That is what you have to have. So I'll see you tomorrow. We'll do it again, this time in the Bell Center. Have a good night, everybody. Uh, try to get some sleep because tomorrow, Game 82, is going to be a big one. Talk to you then. Peace.